know to make sure it comes through correctly. Do, 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 do. This is always like the joy of are we streaming at the right channel? Uh, it's just like a coin toss yep. each time. We are live on St. Lotus. Excellent. Great. All right, we're here. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Kaderberg. Joining I me am, online. Uh, Peter Kritzberger, also known as Halt I Am Reptar, as part of the MTG Cabal cast. Uh, we're really excited to be here. It's not exactly what we had anticipated for January 8th, uh, where we were going to do our first live draft of the year. But Omicron came through and uh, made it an exciting, an exciting time for us, nevertheless. So we managed to, thanks to Eric Levine and lots of other people, we managed to throw together this online draft for y'all. And uh, Reptar decided to jump in and help out. So we're going to be uh, commentating this, this Discord draft as it comes through. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a great time. Uh, I've been trying to follow along with the Discord drafts that have been going this entire time, which, as you guys keep mentioning, over the course of the VRD are extremely fun to do. Mm -hmm. But they move really quickly. They do. It, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. It comes in spurts, usually, where like the Discord, like when it's happening, it feels like you're in it, and it's kind of the thing you're doing that week uh for the actual draft but then for the like when you're actually trying to play the matches it's very hard to find people because just matching up time zones and everything is really difficult so. oh yeah uh, the matches actually seem like kind of i don't want to say an afterthought in the sense that people don't want to play magic but the drafts just seem like so fun and so active right that absolutely. people were just super engaged and, and everyone in in the discord is actually uh hanging out in a voice channel so they're they're talking they are uh, having the same kind of banter we normally get from these things. So this live event should have a lot of the same kind of time pressure on it that the live events we're used to have, which is the reason I, I personally don't love Discord drafts as much is because somebody can sit there and think about something for an hour, uh, whereas yeah. in, in live drafts, if you try to sit there for five minutes, somebody's going to start calling you a lane and then everything starts going nuts. <laughs> I mean, we also get the smack talk back, right? Exactly, right? It's really It's really fun. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, super exciting. I've seen some really varied things go by in the Discord drafts that I hadn't seen in the in-person drafts, and yeah. I'm very curious to see what comes of this. Um, as we mentioned, you know, behind the scenes, I only have an idea of what person's drafting, and here we go. Ooh, Ancestral Recall goes first. That's right up exciting. first. Now, this position is usually contested, right? This is where we'll see Recall or Sapphire or Lotus for the most part. Correct. Yeah, I think there's like some old ones where Soul Ring and Time Vault have gone first, but yep. yeah, you can see like any of these cards are always in round one. Uh, yeah. So I would very much expect to see Sam take Lotus here, but we'll see. Yeah, th this is the kind of part, I think it's like rounds one through three, maybe where it kind of almost follows suit with a, a vintage cube draft, which is in that philosophy where it's like you see power, you draft power. Exactly. And right. it's... It, yeah, it almost kind of it feels uninteresting because it's kind of like, oh, they took Mox Emerald. Are they in green or do they just take the best available Mox? And you don't yep. know yet. What? Wow. Okay, Sam's coming with the spice. This is her, her, she's done, I think, two or three Discord drafts up to now, but this is the first one that we've been following live. Oh, man. Fastbond does so many interesting things. Uh, one of the questions I was going to ask, actually, because I was thinking about this. Oh, Eric with Lotus because you can't let that go. Yep. Okay. Um, Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. And Swifty's here as well. Um, Eureka. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have Sapphire going. Let's see. Eure Eureka usually goes very late, though. That's 21 on average. That's a card that where in Vintage Cube Draft, you don't want to draft it because you usually lose when you cast it. <laughs> True. So it's people, just something I thought about. People, people say the same thing about Show and Tell in, in VRD as well. Hey, Crypto. Okay. I I want, to, I want to come back on that one because when I've been thinking about the lists I want to build, I've kind of been chunking them out into like, this is what I have to draft first because these are core pieces that are going to be fought over. So yeah. power and my lands and stuff. Um, but show and tell, I wanted to put some spice behind. So we have Sapphire Lotus Recall going. Um, now, Ben, we talked about drafting, let's see. Oh, yes, yeah, so this is Brandon. This is Brandon. Oh, Brandon, sorry. Yeah, he, he yep. goes he goes nuts and basically doesn't draft anything, but his pet card, of course, is uh, he's, he's, he's the reigning champion from the last time where he went with a Planeswalker control deck. That Okay, and that was the Nail Walkers yes. setup, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And um, did we see Bre uh, Brandon branch out into Colorless Walkers, Karn the Great Creator as the Nullrod kind I'm of spot? Karn almost always goes first. Uh, let's see, when Karn, uh, the great creator, goes on average. Uh, but he almost always goes first, so round five. 
I don't know okay. if Brandon got him that draft or not in the in Ooh. BRD seven. Uh, but Maybe. yeah, it's it's usually hard to get both Karn and Teferi. Okay, uh, Kevin says yep. that he did have it. So okay, okay, Perfect. Ruby. Okay, so Jet has not yet gone. Cody no. takes Crypt over Jet. That is interesting. So we ex we would expect Pearl and Emerald to go last or right. later, I should say, compared to the others. Uh, I think Emerald, there's an argument for it, but yeah, Pearl's almost always last. I, I would Im imagine uh, Sam and C2 would take, would be looking for Emerald, the fast bond pick. If it gets back around to her, that would be shocking. Um, but Cody taking Crypt, signal, signaling hard that he wants to go colorless. I might, I might see Soul Ring next out of Cody there in, in seat six, seat H. Yeah, we, oh, there goes Jet. So Hagen has the option for double mox. Uh, that's I, I oh, like yeah. I like eight seed because you get double mocks, but it is definitely kind of keeping your options wide open and not t making a stake early. Yes. Oh, there goes Emerald. Yep. From under Sam. Okay, so Hagen looks to be leaning into what he told me he was looking to draft, which is going to be uh, a Simic base. Yep. Uncertain what the third color is going to be. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so so. Yeah. Common gets the the jet pearl. My favorite my favorite type of deck in this format is uh, mm -hmm. is kind of a Pakula type deck where you do mesmeric fiends and brain maggots and things. Um, okay. So I, I would hope to see that, but I don't know. It's it's so early. We have no idea. Yep. So when you say Pakula, you mean meddling mage himself, right? I, I do mean Chris Pakula, and... uh, but the deck the deck specifically that was pioneered the kind of uh, the dead guy ale type deck. Oh, okay, I was thinking more dump truck uh, okay. than than a dead guy ale, but I'm familiar with with, with that. Yeah. There goes Crypt the, at the soul ring. There goes the soul ring. Yep. Now, so this is this is interesting because I I come from more of a legacy and vintage background, and when I see something like Crypt, Soul Ring, and a lot of these these colors options that kind of power themselves, I think Paradoxal Outcome Storm. Uh -huh. And usually we see combo up in the higher seats because it's easier to snag on picks one and three, mm -hmm. some of those high power options that do power themselves. Yes. So I think. In this format, it's really hard to do something like paradoxical because you mm -hmm. don't have the kind of Canadian threshold type, or not Canadian threshold, uh, Canadian Highlander type rules where you can guarantee yourself a certain number of low cost artifacts. Here, yes. here you just are probably going to get one to four, uh, so it's really hard to kind of get the consistency needed for paradoxical. Yeah, you'd have to stretch pretty far into some baubles that cycle essentially, and at that point, mm -hmm. without something to give affinity um, like Michael Synth Golem to everything, you're really not going to go that far. Wow, okay, strip mine from Brandon, really fighting yep. with Sam over there. Uh, and STI taking Tinker. So mm -hmm. uh, Tinker might mean the Time Vault if it gets back around to STI is where, where we go. But yep. Tinker Time Vault tough, is a tough spot to sit in. Yeah, it, it's also a nice wide open spell too. There's so much you can do. You can play any number of combo finishers you want with, with Tinker. And so what I'm thinking about VRD drafts, and I kind of break my decks into chunks, Tinker is definitely part of like the artifact package chunk but it doesn't necessarily have to lead to Time Vault, which is what Mr. Levine takes. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin is the only person to draft Mycosynth Golem. Let's find out, actually. Mycosynth Ooh. Golem. Yeah, it's been only taken one time, so. And for the kind of combos we're talking about, uh, this article kind of goes in pretty in depth into all those different combo choices. Yep. So. Yeah, well, when I first started thinking about uh, VR VRD, Way early, fast bond into Ragavan, so we'd expect probably Taiga to follow. Okay, time walk goes. So how would I pick Taiga to be a little later? But eventually, when the land rush starts, mm -hmm. not immediately. But yeah, I mean, losing strip mine off that fast bond might make might mean she's changing directions, or they could have been the plan all along. Yeah, again, fast bond is a nice wide open card because you can do things like play the old school Zern or Crucible combo. You know. Yep, absolutely. So Time Walk is an interesting one here. It, it is usually taken in round two. I think mm -hmm. it's actually probably a round four or five pick, and it's, it's just there because people know the name. Uh, but Time Walk, especially in a control deck, tends not to be very good, is, is by my experience. If you can get the walkers yep. going or an aggro start, then you're great. But... Yeah, otherwise it's just Explore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just an expensive Explore, yeah. Oh, there goes Karn. Levine, Levine's going the Artifact deck with Time Walk. Okay. Okay, okay. That, that makes, makes sense thus far. And then, have we seen Karn actually pull a lot out of the sideboard in play? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so with Karn, you almost always take, uh, take obviously the is it Microsynth Lighthouse is the main one, yep. uh, and then 
try to get things like Ensnaring Bridge and and a few other cards, right? But it's almost always just you, you're threatening the one card combo yep. uh, one turn after playing it. Um, so yeah, it's it's that is the primary strat reason you play Karn. Got it. So we are going to expect to see Arc take some more big mana options, either in the land base with Ancient Tomb, City of Traders, yep. and maybe what's left with with artifact in artifacts in Mana Vault. I think that's right. I'm guessing the artifacts are really mostly when he's gone by the time it gets back around. And City yep. of Traders uh, isn't taken regularly. Uh, it, I mean, it's obviously taken sometimes, but I think Ancient Ancient Tomb is the big one, right? That yep. one should be much earlier. Yeah. It all depends. I guess it all depends on what's available and where you are in the draft. Because City of Traders is kind of cute because you get around it if you already have a fetch land in play. Fair, yeah. That is so, really interesting, huh? So you, you do get that extra little burst, and then you have like Crystal Vein and some other options if you just kind of constricted to where you're able to ramp. And so you do get some some bump from the colorless options from the land itself. But Hull Breach, you're into the Fairy Time Raveler. Wow. You see thus far. This this is a lot of people fighting over blue, and I'm yep. seeing from Cody's seat, I'm sh I bet he's pissed about that Karn going. Because starting with Mana Crypt Soul Ring, he's taking the next best walker, but mm -hmm. uh, losing Oko, losing Karn, Teferi's the third best, but it's not a good spot to be in. And if I if I were him and assuming that I was going to be going big mana, Mana Vault exactly would have been the next pick I would have taken. Yep. So he's okay. definitely not wanting to do that. He's, he wants to be some kind of Teferi deck. Maybe he's going to be going for the Knowledge Pool combo. That's the that's one option. Oh, okay. And Steven with Urza, which is Force of Negation. Okay, so we're starting with, like, not quite a mid-range strategy mm -hmm. in seat eight, but something that wants to play a little bit more of... You can play either a grindier game or you can try and be explosive with Urza. It depends on where he starts going with his artifact options. Now, as we come back around uh, through seat seven into seat six, do we think we're going to start seeing uh, options like Narset to try and lock down the game? I bet that's Brandon's plan. Cody's seat? If, if, I, okay. if I'm guessing, Brandon. I would say Brandon probably tries to take Narset. Uh, so okay. we can have Narset and Hull Breacher and then go Wheels, uh, especially okay. with a Mox Ruby up there. But I, I don't know, right? That's Brandon has done that in the past and said that it's not a great strategy, but cards yep. are lining up for him and he's getting cards a little behind pace, I would say, right? Like. Hull Breacher in his pick three is very good, where he is in the mm -hmm. middle. Um, yeah, I think that he's kind of set up for a wheels deck if he wants it. Yeah, the last time I think I saw him go wheels was uh, VRD7, and that kind of came through towards the end of mm -hmm. the first group of picks. So right before the first break, I think, we started seeing the wheels deck kind of come out. Because it looked originally like he might have been in a base black control, because I think there was a Thoughtseize pick up top from that seat. Uh, Thoughtseize, maybe. Oh, speaking of thought suits, <laughs> there comes Common with it. Common making mistake yep. as the uh, as the black deck. And thought suits, I mean, Mason has pushed it way up earlier. So I think a lot of these ratings that you see historically, like obviously it's taken every draft, but taking round five on average, I think it's actually a third or fourth round pick usually. Now it's just kind of like historically, um, it is it has started shifting up in the priority list. Yeah, the metagame that's been created mm -hmm. in this VRD ecosystem is such that Thoughtseize now has priority, which is really interesting because you have other good options, too, that aren't as specific as Thoughtseize in things like Mind Twist and Him to Turok still. Correct. Yeah, those, those require much more commitment either to big mana or to harder to black. Yep. So, like, both of those cards get drafted pretty much every time. I'm a huge fan of, of Discard. But, yeah, Thoughtseize and Duress and Inquisition are kind of the three that have gotten shoved way to the top. Yeah. Now, what about something like Cabal Therapy? Therapy the is option. really, really hard. Because, um, yeah, it, you, you basically need to be able to use both halves of it. So let's actually pull up Therapy. I, I don't think it gets taken that often. Uh, it gets taken, yeah, less than half the time and usually very late. Because the, the first ability on it is just we don't have people with Gitaxian Pro with their deck every, with every person with it. Um, yep. So you basically need to name in the dark you don't have enough density of discard spells that you get to have a good understanding of their hand and then unless you can use the flashback it, it's a pretty bad card right obviously that's why yeah. you play it um yep. and, and so you basically need to be a creature deck that also has good hand visibility and then has a reason to sacrifice creatures right so something like that kind of pakula death like dead guy ale type deck uh would be would be a great one for this because you can mesmeric be in their hand see what's in it yep. and then therapy the first time and then later on in the game when things don't matter and you're willing to give them back their discard spell or whatever then yeah. you can uh you can therapy back oh okay so Cody narset. takes narset this is where i thought narset was going to go i didn't think it would make it back yeah to, go, to be paired with hall breacher 
Um, but to, to speak to Cabal Therapy a little bit, we've seen Leovold be picked in kind of that like mid-range creature strategy exist before and do fairly well. And when I think about Cabal Therapy and where you want to play it traditionally in a constructed format, it is a deck like that that can present a number of threats. You don't, mm -hmm. And where eventually some of them get outclassed. Like for whatever reason, let's say you're playing Elvish Visionary, that card is kind of dead after a while. So it's just yes. fodder for Cabal Therapy. Talarian Academy is an, an interesting one. I guess Ooh. that really does lean into the Hull Breacher play. Yep. And so we expect to see a little bit more of an artifact package coming out of that seat, I would assume, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's 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 strange for me to see the strip mine into Talarian Academy because those two cards mm -hmm. tend not to run together. Um, okay. Just because like strip mine kind of falls into a more controlling deck, and Academy mm -hmm. tends to fall into more combo decks, or at least yep. uh, some kind of like heavy artifact deck, like you're saying. Yeah, but uh, that might have actually been uh, taken out of spot from Steven. Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because Wasteland, Demonic Tutor. So and usually we... Okay. okay. I was yeah. going to say, so we have, we, it looks like we have a bunch of control decks, right? So mm -hmm. Talon, uh, STI, I, I thought STI was going to be going for uh, for a combo deck with Tinker, but it seems like a control combo deck at worst. Uh, yep. Cody, obviously, Brandon, probably, Common, and Steven. So we have Sam looking on some kind of aggro deck. That's why she's starting the land run early. Uh, and we have some decks that are probably going to pivot into combo, but not a dedicated combo deck yet, from what I'm seeing. Not yet. Yeah. It, no, a absolutely. It's interesting to see how everybody kind of falls into this immediate, like this control package or pseudo control package up front. But this is a lot of the popular cards that we see drafted up top. Um, Inquisition of Kozilek is a little interesting to see go this early isn't it oh no no In inquisition is i think the second best counter spell or second best discard spell really okay it it's either that or duress but no like those three are kind of the those are like the, the chef's kiss of the that you'd expect to see very early okay i would expect to see duress above i okay but it does make sense some foothills misty rain forest this might be the land the fetch land run at least yeah sam kicked it off very early this time and i think There's... um i think it you don't have to jump into this land fight but people like to do so it, it is interesting. I think that Duress is better in a combo deck, and Inquisition is better in a fair deck, is probably how I would gauge that. Oh, uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, I don't play IOK -okay in Storm, so. Exactly, right. I actually do play... <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> play it in Modern Storm, obviously, but... Yeah. I do play it in uh, in EDH Storm. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I think the last time I played EDH storm and involve the package uh, that could be built around show and tell which i still want to touch on <laughs> when we get there yeah hopefully somebody does it i mean brandon is the person i would expect to be going for show and tell but obviously sti could go there uh even levine could go there yeah levine signal is signaling a, a combo deck though with that demonic tutor pretty early it could just be that that's the best available card but oh so that was i was going to ask this is my question after uh, levine picked demonic tutor you, we usually see vampiric go fairly shortly after demonic as well uh, or first, I, I think I I think if you're going to combo deck specifically, Vampiric's yep. better, uh, but Demonic Tutor is better in fair decks. So yeah, you would I agree. I basically I would expect to see a um, I have expected to see Vampiric earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen Imperial Seal drafted, which is effectively Sorcery Speed Vampiric Tutor. It's much much worse, but yeah yeah, yeah. I agree. It is it does get drafted a lot. I think a lot of the reason it gets drafted is because it's expensive, uh, but. You can see that it goes in roughly two thirds of drafts, uh, usually mm -hmm. very early. I would expect to see this kind of as a thirtieth pick now that the yeah. game has evolved and people have learned more about it. But okay, uh, so Steven's actually sticking with the plan uh, that I thought he would end up and went up in, which is Sultai over Bant. Mm -hmm. Oh, there goes so, the Yep. Yeah. So by being able to pick up the Tropical and the Underground Sea allows him to begin flexing now. So do you think he does go and take fetches in the next couple rounds then? Because otherwise the dual lands don't make a lot of sense to me. Normally you'd want to fight for those once you have the fetches. From uh, what he's told me, which is now at this point going to be a stasis style deck, nice. I think uh, the rest of his list isn't really going to be fought over. So I do assume we start seeing Steven take his uh, fetches. And I guess he just wants the fetches. Uh, he wants the fetches ahead of time because uh, he wants the dual lands ahead of time because somebody that also has taken fetches in the previous round could steal them from him. Exactly, and he values the the duels over the fetches. Yep, and over the the triumphs or anything else. Okay, uh, how often? Are the, I mean, the triumphs being fairly new. Yeah. Uh, how often have we seen them in the last couple of drafts? 
So I think they are criminally underdrafted is, is okay. the starting point. But I, I think there's good reasons for that, which is that people, not everybody has access to, uh, not everyone has access to the fetch lands. So they just yep. aren't as good. And you really only want them if you're all three colors. Because um, otherwise, like, you have shocks, you have fe- original duels, you have, like, even the, the um, like, the tap duels that can cycle, I think is what they are, uh, might be better yeah. than these in the dark, right? Because they cycle for less. But Yeah, so in, in the tier list of lands that make two plus color mana, they fall down fairly hard. Right, but if you're in three colors, they should absolutely be in your deck, and I think people oh, yeah, don't necessarily take them. Yeah, so I think it's a good call that we might actually see Steven move into the Soltoi Triumph. Mm-hmm. Yep, I think that's very, very likely. And if I could yep. remember any of their names, I would I would pull it up. Uh, Ketria is the only one I remember. Same. There's the Zagoth. <laughs> Zagoth is something. Is that Sultai? That might be... I, I, I think it is Okay, yeah. I'd be impressed if it was the Mardu one. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the one. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, we're the Fetchland run starting in round five. That seems incredibly yep. early to me. Let's see when Wooded Foothills. Obviously, like, that's not the one that you would normally expect to see uh, go first. Ooh. But yeah, usually around 14. So this is incredibly wow. early. Yeah. So Red from Sam. Now... When it comes to the Elemental Blast <laughs> versus their counterpart in uh, Pyro and Hydro Blast, do we usually see the Elemental Blast go before the alternatives? No, I mean, usually it's Pyro first, but I mean, this early, there's no way that either of them should be going. Um, but like, uh, that's not to say she's doing anything wrong, right? She's She is making her claim. She is going to be the oh. red deck. And, uh, and like, she doesn't need to take other cards. These are the cards that could get theoretically taken from her. Oh yeah, absolutely. The reason I ask is because there is the difference between the two yes. from a play perspective. Yeah, it's the difference is so minimal, but yes, in general pyro goes slightly earlier. Okay. So I would expect to see things like null rod out of her next, and possibly even chill and warmth, um, just to take them off the table for somebody else. Yeah. But uh, yeah, null rod would be the next card I would I would hope to see from her. Uh, yep. Possibly, you know, maybe I think just null rod is the the next one. So, oh, okay. There's there's the Tega. That makes sense. Yeah, clear it yeah. off to make sure nobody else steals it. Yep. Now, preordain and ponder. Those go. I don't want to say right around now. I feel like the the VRDs that I've watched, they do go in the first round of drafts, maybe a little later. So there you go. Usually ten. So we're a couple of rounds early. Mm-hmm. But these are not necessarily the fillers for your deck. They're outside the core. I agree. With They're that. outside your primary strategy, right? Yeah. This is a little late for Grim Monolith, I think, especially kind of given oh. the, the modern shift of artifacts going very early. Mm-hmm. Chrome Mox is about now. Okay, yeah, Grim Mox is okay. right on, uh, on spot. But yeah, the Grim Monolith. Uh, Levine is really... I, I see him kind of like... Just watching his picks right now, he seems to be taking the card that's like roughly two rounds late, right? So like a card okay. that's just floating a little late, he's taking them... Yep. Uh, like, well, this card's available, I'll take it. So he really does seem to be kind of the person that's uh, moneyballing this draft. Okay. Like, everybody else has lanes and is kind of in those lanes of doing, yep. like, making very solid picks. I don't see anything that's embarrassing yet. Um, no. But, yeah, he, he definitely does seem, like, the most open and just grabbing whatever is the best card right now. Yeah, the, his draft is kind of the most curious to me because a lot of these cards I would expect to be in different decks. For me, looking at Grim Monolith alongside Inquisition and Demonic Tutor, it doesn't quite make sense yet. Uh, he's a black draft, right? That's that's the only thing I know about his deck so far is that it's a black deck and that it will yes. have. I'm going to send Vladis on the sideboard, um, but like he's he has Lotus, uh, he has uh, Grim Monolith. He can go mm-hmm. big if he needs to. Uh, there's a lot of choices still. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, being a, a combo player myself, I Grim Monolith signals a number of things to me, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we saw. Uh, the Firefox picked at some point. Yep, Zerda. And Zerda, Zerda is what he drafted in, in the last Discord draft we did. Uh, yeah. And it, it did very well. I think he, I don't know if he went 4 3 or 3 4, but he yeah. ended up having some really explosive games. He was the only person to beat the Goblins player. Mason drafted Goblins that time and oh, okay. went went 6 1 uh, and only lost to, to Firefox. Yeah. Hey, that's actually a deck I've, I've put a lot of effort into because it's the most unique in terms of packages that I could kind of come up with where you're not reliant necessarily on power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's great. So the the Dark Confidant and Snapcaster Mage were were at a time when this uh, when this format kind of got conceived and built out in like 2012, 2013. They were yep. always the first two creatures taken. So it's nice to see them both. Dark Confidant's fallen off a lot recently. Yeah. Uh, to the point of not even being drafted every draft. But it's it's nice to see it kind of uh, get the respect it deserves for, as yeah, an institution. It's in the top five. It's 
Snapcaster was uh, the third, right? Uh, Snapcaster was the third, right? Because we had Ragavan yeah. into. Oh, I Hull forgot Breacher. about Ragavan. Yeah, Ragavan, yep. Hull Breacher. Urza. Urza was the third. Okay, yeah, yeah. So then yeah. Snapcaster, and now. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we might be out of, or close to out of, usable fetch lands for Steven. So picking up Mental Misstep, which is good in any format like this. Yeah, it looks like eight of the fetch Bayou. lands. They nicely highlighted them for us. There's eight of them they've taken so far. But are you saying that the other two are not? I'm not tracking them closely enough. Uh, same. I, I don't think they are. So, what did Foothills Verdant Catacomb and Windswept Heath are green? Mm -hmm. Delta, Verdant. We have um, Marsh Flats available. Okay. And. Yeah, Mist Up is an interesting one. Um, I would not have expected to see that go this early. But I, yeah, it looks like it's kind of in this range. Um, Mist Up is one of those cards that I think has its stock a little pushed up because of its how good it is in other formats uh but i don't i don't think it's as good in this format hey wonder how you doing i am kind of uh jaded when it comes to mental misstep because <laughs> playing through standard playing delver in that format it was amazing there and then also a goblins player in legacy at the time you play 56 cards and mental misstep so for yes. me that card is always good whenever you, you can slide it in a deck it's, it's just uh Okay, so common, common took skull flap. Common, I yep. think, is on my is on my favorite deck. I think he's going to be going for the uh, at least black little creatures. I don't know what other colors can be paired with it. Possibly white okay. from the pearl, but yeah, yep. the skull flamp and dark confidant signals to me that there's going to be a brain maggot coming into that field and a Ms. Oh, or okay, Ms. Merica fiend. Soon. fiend. Uh, what about opposition agent? Oh, uh, okay. So opposition agent I was super hyped for it. We did a stream about it, and we were really excited when it first came mm -hmm. out. And it's been drafted. I've drafted it twice, and Steven has also drafted it twice. It has been very meh. It's kind of, there aren't enough uh, search effects to be able to get it consistently every single game. Uh, mm -hmm. And you just end up like sitting there with three mana up and eventually just playing it as a three mana beater. Um, yep. And it might have like some marginal benefits later in the game, but it's, it's yep. it wasn't the powerhouse that I expected it to be. Oh. Esper Sentinel, on the other hand, has been yeah. very strong. That's a card I've been thinking of recently uh, for my own personal cube, just to power up white. In VRD, obviously, the colors are as wide as possible. They're as deep as possible, mm -hmm. because you've got everything available to you. In a cube, it's a little tighter. Yes. And Esper Sentinel just seems like it stands out incredibly well. Ooh, oh, Shell Shell Doctor. Doctor. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see a mill deck out of this slot. No, I don't think so. Um, okay. Sheldock is a, it's just a good card, right? Like, you, you play it, and it kind of threatens that if the game goes late, you get an extra card out of it. Uh, yep. and, and the cost is incredibly low. Uh, yes. I have played Sheldock in, I think, three different drafts and activated it twice, but okay. when I did it, I won the game. So, right? Like, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's, not, even, it's not even like a... Uh, it, it is just... It is a powerful card. Um, I think yes. it's actually undervalued in that it's drafted in less than half the drafts. If you're a oh, blue wow. deck, you should probably. If you're a blue deck, you should probably be taking Shell Dock Forty Fifth. If nobody else is taking it. Okay. There's the Marsh Flats. Okay. Yep. So it leaves one more that nobody seems to have figured out yet. <laughs> I, I wonder if Hagen's kicking himself about that. About not taking the flats. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it only grabs the the underground sea and bayou, but still, that seems good enough to me. Black red is the only one left. So. Oh, Sam's uh, going for Fetal Sluting. Oh. Okay. This is a very interesting seat for. I think Sam and Levine seem to be the most interesting seats right now because there's still a lot open and available to them. Yeah, I mean, I had Sam just on burn, but now that's signaling to me that something else is going to be happening. Yep, I wonder if we will see a Crucible or a Ramming Up Excavator. Interesting, yeah. I mean, Or but, even alone. Yeah, it has to be some kind of red green deck. Um, but yep. why, why would you do Faithful Slowly in, in that kind of red green deck? Well, that's what I mean, right? So if you you have fast bond, you have crucible, ram it up, excavator, or loam, you can just keep loaming. Okay. You can just keep bringing that stuff back, right, for value. That's I mean, I, we're not going to see like barbarian ring and stuff like that, but it, it does leave the possibility open. Yep. No, that, that's true. Uh, what is that? It's ramming up ruins, right? That's the uh, the desert. Yeah. Yeah. The, the second barbarian ring. Mm -hmm. And if people are following along with uh, Kamagawa spoilers. We're getting uh, a new land cycle. I forgot the keyword that's on it, but it basically allows you to cast your lands for value from hand. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the original Kamigawa um, ability channel. Yes. Yeah, Renin 6 is a great call out, Wanderer. 
I think oh, that, yeah, absolutely. That, that will be on the radar because that's I, usually taken earlier. I couldn't think of Ren and Six. I was only thinking of Ren and Seven. Mm. This is the EDH player in me coming out. <laughs> uh, I mean, I also play Stoneforge Mystic and Modern, so it's still out of that wheelhouse. <laughs> that is fair. All right, so we have Hollow Fountain to Steam Vents, so we might be looking at Jeskai and the Triumph, mm -hmm. although we only have one fetch land there. Veil of Summer is a good pickup there. That's actually a Absolutely. great one. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of, of Sam's drafting so far here. I would like to see a Null Rod very soon if she hasn't taken mm -hmm. it, if nobody else takes it in the next round. But other than that, I think that, like, I agree with pretty much every pick. I think Red could have gone later because, like you said, Pyro exists. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, other than that, I think everything there has been very tight. Yeah, absolutely. It leaves some questions, too, for the rest of the drafters because Faithless Limiting is such a unique card in this situation. We just don't know what's going to happen from that seed, so it's hard to try and predict. And It's too early to counter comp, but... Right. But I mean, so this, the, the beauty of this is that your ratings have to move based on what other people are drafting, right? So it's yes. not so much about sniping their pick as it is about uh, keeping your pick open. Yep. Oh, Time twister is one word. Yep, and Brandon is going through the wheels. The wheels. But we see Ancient Tomb taken out from... Uh, so Levine passes on Ancient Tomb, takes Watery Grave, signaling possibly a Demir deck. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so so yeah, the the blue I guess is just we don't know what it's for yet, but presumably there will be some good blue cards. Yep, and both of the fetch lands are effectively triumphs. Correct. Because they both get watery grave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't know if if Levine's going to be on green and white, but yeah, at least at least they are extra dual lands. Yep. That's uh, out of watching as much. Uh, vintage cube draft as i have that's the most interesting takeaway that i think i've had about fetch lands and duels in formats like this is that you don't necessarily need your on or even want your on color fetch lands you want fetch lands that help you extend yes into a third color correct yeah having the two colors of yours aren't necessarily as relevant as they are yeah okay so uh cody is sitting there the days is interesting. So that kind of signals closer to the ground, but maybe it's just a, mm -hmm. I, I need to counter something that they're overextending for. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the Narset to Fairy is an interesting, especially on the back of two double mana producers that don't cast either of them. So far, his, uh, yep. his mana producers don't cast any of his spells. Yeah, it's almost like we're waiting to see a Noble Hierarch out of this seat. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Going to, the, going to a third color would be, would be hard, but the Windswept Teeth makes it possible for sure. Yep. Um, but the, the days comes in in the eighth round. Spell Pierce was taken in the fourth, so mm -hmm. it could have just been a swap based on on that position. That makes sense, yep. Yeah. So when, when we're looking at Dark Confidant and Discal Clamp, you mentioned Brain Maggot, uh, Mesmeric Fiend. So that kind of keeps us in mono black. What comes out of the white spot for, for this deck? Well, you mentioned your modern deck, and Stoneforge Mystic is a pretty good card. Uh, okay. So that's that's normally the combo, right? Is that you you have yep. like you run Thalia, or you have Stone Stoneforge, Myst Stoneforge Mystic, uh, which can grab your Skull Clamp as well as uh, as well as the big the big boys, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, Remand. I'm completely yep. wrong about what Common's doing. Uh, okay. Apparently, we're going blue black. Um, kind of. This is the the deck that Marshall Sutcliffe talked about a lot back when he I think he did the um, the seventh edition of this on the Northwest League out of the Shotgun Lotus crew. Uh, okay. And he he ran a a blue black kind of little creature deck um, that just oh. countered things early, ran things like days and uh, and like I, I, in this day it would be things like mystical dispute, um, yep. and then just had hand disruption off the little creatures and beat down with them. So I still think that the dream for mesmeric fiend is alive, uh, yep. but I don't think it's going to be kind of the the Thalia Stoneforge deck that we we're expecting. Yeah. So we have a question in chat asking what Steven was doing taking Oko <laughs> over Moxon. And while technically correct, because there was still a Pearl available, Chrome Mox and Mox Opal, as well as Diamond, he did take Emerald first. Yes. And yeah, like losing the Pearl isn't a huge deal. I think, and whether right or wrong, right, there's a whole article Steven wrote about it. I'll, I'll link mm -hmm. to it in a minute, about why he thinks Walkers are undervalued, even to yep. this day. Uh, uh, but yeah, the, like, Planeswalkers in VRD are on a huge upswing. They just won a big tournament, uh, yep. and in general, they are uh, they are incredibly powerful. So I think, yeah. I think that of of the people that talk about uh, talk about Planeswalkers a lot, Stephen Hagen is right at the top. Uh, uh, I'll I think we can spoil this one at this point. 
The strategy that Steven intimated to me that he was looking to implement was Jorn Snow Stasis. Wow. Hold on, so, my computer's locking. I don't know if I am still broadcasting or not. But Oh, you are. We still see it. Okay, so uh, Jorn is the flip, is it God? The green God mm -hmm. that flips into a piece of equipment. Uh, it's blue-black on the other side. That's why Steven wasn't sure if he was going to go um, Sultai or Bant. Okay. If he, basically, was he going to play in the backside or just cast the front side? And interesting, yeah. Jorn is, is not even on our list. I'm going to jump over here. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic just got taken, but I'm going to yep. jump over to the actual. Yeah. So Stoneforge Mystic taken in the deck we expected it to. So this looks like it's shaping up the to be Esper. So you untap each snow permanent you control. So there's a lot on the backside, and I, as Steven was kind of questioning whether or not he even wanted to use the backside when we were talking, but that's why he didn't value Pearl. Okay, that, oh, makes, there, that makes sense. Um, your audio might not be set up in that other scene, by the way. Chat's saying we lost it. Uh-oh, checking. Can you hear me now? I think we're coming back. Okay. Okay. Yep. So it's just in the other scene. Yep. So Pearl is kind of devalued in that situation because when, we were, when Steven and I were talking, like I said, he didn't have an idea of which... Third, what his third color was going to be. So prioritizing Oko, an extremely powerful Planeswalker in this format, over a tertiary mox that might not even have been the best tertiary mox kind of seems appropriate. Yeah, I, I agree. I also don't... I don't know. I, I think I value mox on higher than most people um, in the St. Lotus crew. I, mm -hmm. I think that they're just like heads and tails above anything else. Uh, but other people will obviously disagree, taking things... Uh, taking things like fast bond ahead of it, for instance. So, oh yeah, J Jaster going prismatic ending into swords to plowshares is interesting. There, I like prismatic ending. I think it doesn't get as much play as it should. I think a lot of people kind of underestimate casting it for just one white. Oh, agreed. I think it's very strong, uh, and also like a lot of these decks. Like I ran a I ran an all artifact deck uh, mm -hmm. at, in the Saint Lotus Presents tournament recently, and I had Prismatic Ending in there, and when commentators saw me take it, they're like, well, he was only a two-color deck. And then they looked at the deck list and like, no, he can produce all five colors. Oh, man. Uh, just because, like, there's so many random things that produce extra mana of yeah. different colors. Yeah. Uh, right now, we only have Tundra, but our Ooh. fetch lands allow us to extend much past that. There, Show and tell. There's your boy. Boom. So, for me, this is really interesting because Show and Tell is a super open card. Mm -hmm. You can do so much after Show and Tell, right? So, classically, we see it paired with Sneak Attack, and omniscience mm -hmm. how about thousand year storm <laughs> that's certainly or an option aether flux reservoir oh man yeah i mean th those cards are a lot harder to cast fairly um mm -hmm. so i think that that's might be the reason but yeah that is a it, it's it's definitely an option we'll say i mean he's kind of set up for it too right there's the there's ancient tomb there's a the shelldock isle that's also kind of cheating things in oh yeah uh, we could still be looking at blightsteel colossus Correct. As a value play, I mean, we, he's absolutely going to take it because he has a tinker, and tinker for Blightsteel wins like probably half the games you would do it. Yep. Uh, and when you don't do it, then you just keep going with the game. Yep. Levine with just straight counter spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Drain getting taken obviously in pick four there by STI, but mm -hmm. counter, counter spell is completely serviceable. Yep. Well, it just kind of makes it really curious now. So he has Demonic Tutor, IOK as the. The black cards in the deck counter spell double blue pip off of a watery grave a grim monolith there's the courser plus fast bond that we often see get paired together where mm -hmm. uh, they, it allows for things like the zuran orb combo to go up so i think that you're right that sam's probably going to be doing a zuran orb combo alongside this i think uh, sam bolted uh, mentions that sam's picks are interesting there i think that i think it, the fast bond first pick i can't defend right but once you have fast bond and you know you're going to be in this deck Taking yep. Ragavan second makes a lot of sense to me because it's the only card that could be stolen from you, right? So, like, she's not going to be taking cards that other people want, so I might as well take all these cards early. Yeah, and Fast Bond plus Ragavan also allow the power out of casting some other large options from players. You know, you're not always going to end up with Ragavan in your opening hand because you're just playing one-ofs, but the ability to open up on Ragavan on turn one or two after a fast bond yes. and just blowing somebody out by stealing something really convenient off the top, even having to dash in Raghavan, I think it's extremely powerful. 100% with you. 
Deviant Skydiver is an interesting one. It's one that we thought was going to be very good, just yep. due to its vintage power, but hasn't actually performed very much. I was going to ask about this card before it was picked, like just by seconds. It's fine, um, but it's not. It, it doesn't get taken very often because there's not the density of artifact mana, right? This isn't vintage mm -hmm. where every person has five mocks in. Uh, yep. So you just often won't get things. That's a very early blight steal. I well, guess. you can't even steal Moxing with Thieving Sky ever, right? Uh, I thought it was X or less. Yeah, you can oh, do X it or less. Okay, okay. Yep. For one. Yep. That uh, blight steal is very early. I guess worried about uh, Brandon taking it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> given this <laughs> Emerald Yep. This is interesting because the ability to cast Emerald does exist if there's more artifact options to be picked in the spot. You well, have Academy in the deck. Y yes. Uh, I, I think I think when I see Emrakul, my brain immediately goes to, I have Hullbreacher in play, I cast a wheel, I tap Talarian yep. Academy for seven, sacrifice off seven tokens, and there's 14 of your 15 for Emrakul. Exactly. Yeah. It's not just protection, quote-unquote, uh, for an early show-and-tell. It mm -hmm. plays into that. And if you need to value wheel, Emrakul just re-ups on everything if you don't have the Hullbreacher. Okay, Containment Priest from Cody is a good one, given that we see Show and Tell coming out and possibly oh, yeah. cool as well. We need to learn the power of Opportunistic Dragon. I think I need to learn what that card is. Uh, well, this card has been taken one time. Uh, okay. I don't know if I'm willing to defend it, but I'll at least pull it up. Uh, it Kevin did draft this deck in, in the St. Lotus Presents tournament. He drafted a... Uh, what is that terrible card that makes everything cost two less and get minus one, minus one? Oh, Heart, uh, Heartless, Heartless Summonings? Summonings? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he drafted a Heartless Summoning deck uh, that was very cool uh, that drafted a bunch of dragons along with it. I oh, okay. don't know if it's necessarily one we're going to see today, but it is, a, it is a very cool deck. That is definitely interesting. Um, so Urza Saga. Well, we were, we were about to talk on that right before we saw the Blight Steel pick, which is huge. How often is... Every single I time it's drafted. Saga's... It's very good. Right, Actually, right in this position. Right on, on C. Right on time. Yep. Uh, but in this case, it's probably going to be getting Black Lotus most of the time. Uh, yep. But we'll see if something else comes out of it. Often, Sensei's Divining Top is the card that gets taken, but Brandon took that in pick 10. Possibly, yep. I would love if Brandon went for like a Future Sight, uh, top, Future Sight, Sensei's Divining Top, and uh, whatever the house is. The, what is that Bolas card? Citadel? Bolas Citadel. Yeah, that'd be yeah, very cool. Bolas Citadel. That, I was going to ask when we saw um, SDT, because... Oh, of course. The, Wanderer points out it gets the key for Time Vault. That's that, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, yeah, if I was actually just going to check to make sure we could get every single key yeah. with uh, with Saga. Uh, the the two good ones at least, right? So like the two replaceable. Uh, what what its Voltaic key is of course the classic, and Manifold key is the new one. Yes, Manifold key is the better one. Yeah, other than art. But this isn't really good art, so yeah, Manifold key and, and Voltaic both. If you I don't think Eric's going to be doing this, but obviously you can go into things like Rel's Eric, or uh, uh, you could do the three mana key, Galvanic key, things like that. Oh, yes, it's just... So there's and, like uh, infinite options. The original Rel's Eric, correct? Correct, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe even Alton flips some coins. <laughs> I don't know how likely that is, but it is nice <laughs> to, to, uh, to protect yourself and go off at the same time. Yes, yeah. So common with this uh, Stoneforge. Stoneforge Skull Clamp... Uh, that remand is, is, is looking a little strange to me now that Stoneforge got taken. I wonder how likely it is that Kama actually goes full Esper versus uh, leaving the remand out and kind of saying, I'm not going to fight blue with everyone else. I don't know if there's another high power blue counter spell I will look at besides uh, the, the one from Corset that I, I just can't think of. Mystical right Dispute, now. maybe? Yeah, Dispute. Yep. Dispute's very good. I, I, have a, I have a list of all the counter spells and I have an article in waiting that I need to actually write up. Uh, that goes through that, but ooh, duress is a good pick duress. up there. Yep, absolutely. It just keeps you protected and nestled in nice in your plan. That's right. Along with him to Turok. So basically, if we were looking at discard spells, we have all the big ones. Yeah, I mean, my twist the is the already. last one. Yep. Uh, aside from Brain Maggot and Mesmeric. <laughs> True. Those those are gonna be very late, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, nobody's gonna really step on that. Karn Scion is one that. It doesn't get taken all the time, but every time I've seen it played, it's very good. This uh, is Karn with pants, right? Yes, Karn with pants. Uh, and Swifty, thanks for coming in and uh, and hanging out. Excited to hear your thoughts on the VOD later. Two cards in your library, and opponent chooses one of them. Put that card into your hand, exile the other one. Oh, that's right, and then you can just cast the cards from exile. Um, yeah, 
I'm very curious how this is going to work if Steven does move into a stasis plan because you still have to tap down. And if you're going to lock somebody under static orb, winter orb, what have you, you've got to be able to tap those. I think this card is very comparable to draw a card every turn. Like, I think it's a, a one-sided howling mine in most of yep. the games that you play it. And then some games where you're ahead, you just make some creatures and beat down with it. But that's, yep. unless you're in an infinity list, I think it's mostly just draw a card every turn. Okay, that's what I thought. It was either that or the minus two is going to be really strong, especially with the Urza pick ahead of it and Oko. Correct. So you're going to be churning out a lot of artifacts, so your constructs are going to be really large. And I'm kind of curious to see if Steven had Urza Saga in his list. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it could just be that, like, he wants more walkers, and he took Nyssa mm -hmm. early, obviously, because I, I think he anticipated Brandon and maybe Sam going for it. Yeah, the, uh, the Vernal Bloom effect off that Nyssa is going to be huge. Absolutely. Seeing Dovin there is a good pick from Cody. That's a card that I don't value as highly as everyone else does, but uh, if Cody is, is sitting on kind of these board control cards, Dovin's another good one for it. Yep. And we saw Imperial Seal go to Levine, yep. which that seems very early, and Sam with ramming up Excavator, so it does look like Sam is preparing to play out of the graveyard. Absolutely. Yep, Sam. Okay, and there's the last last of the, the fetch lands. No. Oh, yeah, March Flats one. Yep. Yep. That's so right. Levine well, grabbed it. Talon, Talon has grabbed everything. Talon's deck is still the one that I think is most open. It's kind of just like, here's a bunch of good blue cards and uh, and, and a path to exile. Yep, and the ability to stretch into white via Hollowed Fountain. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hollowed Fountain and the Erd Mesa. Uh, yeah, they're great. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, Kevin wanting to have a little more excitement in this draft. Things are I, things are not going too wild this one. Everyone's no, I, I, yeah, I can agree with that. Some some of the lists that I've seen behind the scenes for people that who are unable to be in here, Jason, uh, are wildly <laughs> off the wall. And this is this is the fun thing of uh, a lot of the Discord drafts. You tend to see people do more crazy things, kind of try it out. People try to uh, try to. Uh, let's try out new strategies and things go really wild. But once yep. once we get to kind of the St. Lotus events, there people like discipline down hard and say like, okay, I tried out a bunch of things. I got I learned got some good learnings from here. And now I'm going to take it for real because I know yep. everyone's watching me. Yeah, Goblin Anarchomancer. Anarchomancer. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It is your Baral. It is your Goblin Electromancer for Gruel. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know what the uh, what the reason is for it. Uh, the only thing I think I can think of is Sam wants to be uh, Sonic here and just go fast. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, you know what it is? I, I bet this deck is the one that Brandon, Sam, and I talked about at length, where mm -hmm. you draft, uh, what is the Burning Tree Emissary? I think it's the Burning Tree Emissary deck. Like a, just... an 8-wax style deck? Exactly, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. You, just, you dump your entire hand out and turn one and two. Oh, okay. So Tezzeret the Seeker is kind of as expected to go alongside Time Vault. Mm -hmm. The Crucible, so, Crucible goes to Brandon. They're he, mm. they're fighting hard inside that house. Does Dig Through Time usually go around uh, now? It seems, seems a little very early. early. I agree. Um, because Dig Through Time, I mean, unless you really want to be the the instant speed deck, you can mm -hmm. replace it with Treasure Cruise pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's usually eighteen. This is this is very early for it. Okay, so. I guess this kind of signals the idea that there's still more to come from a combo shell in this list. You're looking for two cards very specifically when you do this, and all the other tutors are gone. Yeah, you, that's, put, that's true. And Mystical puts it on top, which might be a little slow compared to Dig Through Time. And that's the only other card, the only other one besides Gamble that might fit in this spot. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it, this is a show-and-tell list, right? And yep. probably not an artifact show-and-tell list because there's not a Fabricate that's gotten taken. And you, okay. would, you would think that if this is a show and tell list, you'd want to be grabbing, or a show and tell list for an artifact win con, you'd want to be taking Fabricate to stop Levine from taking it. Um, Got it, yeah. But I don't know, maybe I overvalue Fabricate, which is very possible. It's a very good card. I think when I was thinking of building uh, a Firefox shell, I was looking at Fabricate and Transmute artifacts mm -hmm. as ways to go and ensure I could get things like Staff of Domination without having to fight people over some of the other options in, let's say, black and white to go tutor. Yeah, Kevin so points I, out that, that Tinker already exists over there, so it's probably going to be some kind of artifact win combat. That might just be from Blightsteel. Maybe it's show and tell for Blightsteel is the plan. Yeah. Uh, that was also in the second run, right? So Tinker might have been taken with the thought that they could still get Time Vault, and then Levine just snap time vault immediately mm -hmm. true true so trinker tinker could be from a passe version so to speak of what this deck wanted to do and now we're shifting that's possible yeah 
Uh, there, then to your point though, there is still balls of Citadel available, but without SDT, you're kind of playing in the dark, so to speak. Yeah, the, the Citadel is, uh, I would expect to see out of Brandon if anyone goes for it. Citadel yep. doesn't use, is not a card that uh, that needs to show up every single draft. Uh, let's yep. see. Yeah, it's 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 pretty in uncommon, but a quarter of the time it gets taken, and usually pretty late. So while we're talking about Brandon's deck, we see Time Twister. Will we see Time Spiral out of a deck like this? Because it's, it is the. I don't think so. It's it's a little late. Um, it like it without High Tide. I don't think Time Spiral usually gets taken, but I could easily be wrong about that. Actually, let's even with. So is the Wrinkle Academy in this list? Ooh, good call. Good call. No, that's actually a, a great. Pick up. I wonder. Yeah, Academy might make that justified, but Brandon doesn't really have the artifact payoffs other than Hallbreacher, right? So there's Crucibles like the Crucible and Top, um, but and Esper Sentinel. Good call. I mean that 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 one's kind of neither here nor there, and maybe some cheeky deck fade in action. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, Time Spiral I think... doesn't always get taken. I, I would I would expect to see Wheel of Fortune ahead of Time Spiral. Okay. The reason why I asked about Time Spiral is because it is, a, it is the closest analog to Time Twister, allowing you to shuffle everything back in if you want to go again, right? so to speak. Uh, I, th I think Windfall and, and Wheel of Fortune are probably earlier than Time Spiral, but Time Spiral could easily get taken. Okay. It, it wouldn't shock me if he takes it, but it's not. it wouldn't be a priority for me, at least. Got it. Okay, so while we're sitting here, we're looking at this Planeswalker list, and we're, we're looking at the next pick, we see that we're kind of clearly going to be, right now, just Azor. Yeah, I th think so. Um, the, the, the prismatic ending signals to me that there at least will be a pickup of some kind of green from that windswept heath, or it, maybe some other color probably falls in there, but it probably won't be primary. I think you're you're spot on. I I'm still have dreams of this deck being a knowledge pool deck. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's where my head's at. Can we bring up knowledge pool? Yeah. Uh, I, it's one of those cards I know of, but... It, it hasn't been taken a lot, right? It's been taken once, yeah. and I think Steven took it last time. Uh, and that was kind of on the back of that combo article I wrote where I, yep. I declared this as the best combo that hasn't been drafted. But Teferi mm -hmm. plus Knowledge Pool means that they're, they, every time they cast a spell, it gets exiled, and then they have to try to cast it, but they, have, they can't cast it. They can't under Teferi. Right, because Teferi prevents yeah. them from doing anything at instant speed. Yep. Um, so you can do it with Teferi Time Raveler, the original Teferi. Uh, you can do it with... Uh, th there's another half that replaces there's, Knowledge Pool. There's Null Rod. Nice. Okay, yeah, Sam's probably not feeling great about that, but I, I do. if she's going 8 whack, maybe that's less of a priority than if she were burned. Yeah. Could you... We have Narset set up. That works with Puzzle Box, correct? Narset does work with Teferi's Puzzle Box. Uh, similarly, the Hull Breacher does. Um, yeah. Puzzle Box but we don't have Hull Breacher. Happen, yeah. Not, okay. not on that list, no. Mana Leak's a good one. Mana Leak's is one of those premium counter spells. Ooh, now, Bitter Blossom. That's, wow. that's great. Getting that ahead of common. Yep. Because Bitter Blossom uh, Skull Clamp is, is the typical. Okay, yeah. There's Mystical Dispute. That's a great one. Yep. Yeah, Steven's list is... I, I think Steven's picks these last few have been very good. I've, I'm way less high on all these uh, Planeswalkers than him, but mm -hmm. in, in general, like he's given his uh, predilections, he's, he's drafting very well, I think. Yeah, everything he's picking is powerful. I think he's doing what you mentioned Levine is doing, which is playing Moneyball and just drafting some of these options uh, a round or two ahead of time and saving yep. a lot of his middling picks for exactly that later on. Mm -hmm. Scrubland, uh, nice. Grab that one pretty late. But there we go. We have confirmation from chat that uh, Knowledge Pool plus Teferi 3 is a chef's kiss. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. I think that that, that card is very good. Model can spell queller. This is interesting. Do you so think we that? Do you think this is going to be a? I mean, I was, I was going to say this seems a lot like a sword or a stoneforge mystic deck, but that's already taken. That is exactly what I thought when I read uh, Model can to spell queller, and I wonder if we do see a curve into something like Noble High Arc and Toski. Ooh, because that, it keeps you, it the, just keeps you moving. Yeah, the green the green would be would be tough, but he he has he set up partially for it already. Um, we seen it could also be a spirits deck. Yes, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Uh, have we seen? Uh, uh, this is difficult. There's mystical. Um, mm -hmm. Oops, what was I thinking of? Savannah has that been taken? I have not seen it yet. Uh, okay. Good taxi and probe has not. Oh, you just misspelled it. Okay. 
I still have no idea what STI is doing, but taking a lot of good blue cards. So we have not seen Savannah taken, so that could still go. <laughs> uh, Mason there in chat is really uh, really happy that Narset made it to round four before getting taken. <laughs> he knows his history of getting taken in round two here. Just push it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mason is a noted lover of Narset and thinks it's the best walker in the format. It is an extremely good, extremely good walker. Ignoble Hierarch speaks of the plan, speaks of that eight whack plan. Get out of here, Talon. You can't take that card. It was literally picked four picks ago. <laughs> <laughs> in the same round. Now, so Levine now on JTMS. So that's two walkers that require a double blue. Mm -hmm. We have to be playing Demir something. Yes, I, I agree. I think now we're pretty firmly into the just blue black as the plan. Um, which with the, like you said, right, Watery Grave plus two fetches that grab Watery Grave seems very strong. Uh, that's a very late Jace the Mind Sculptor, I think. I mean, obviously historical metrics are going to show that it's better than it actually is because it yep. was the best one for a really long time. Um, yeah. But yeah, usually around six and getting it at 14 is pretty good. Usually around a six, wow. I feel like the last couple of VRDs, if you go back and watch them, the conversation whenever JTMS is picked is how it continues to fall down based on the power of three mana planeswalkers. I totally agree, right? This is where I, I kind of want to have like, usually in round six from the past 60, and what are the past 10, right? Because I think Jason yep. would probably be closer to 15 or so if you only look at the last 10. Yeah. Library, now this is always an interesting conversation when it comes to, to draft formats like this. It's great on turn one when you're on the play or draw, because you just play, you can play uh, Ancestral to refill to Library and then just continue going. But is it a good late game pick, and does that make it worthwhile at all if you're not playing Control? Uh, if you're not playing Control, it's bad. Uh, and late game, I mean, it taps your mana, right? The, the cost, this is why this yep. card has been incredible since it was printed. It's the, the cost of having it in your deck is almost nothing. Uh, yep. And when you do happen to draw it on turn one, you win like 70% of those games or something. It's pretty, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, so you just pick, you pick it when available to increase your opportunity to win the game from turn one to turn two. Yep, and I think this is like right at the end of pack Ooh. one, it's probably the time to take it. Wow. That spice. That, I mean, talk about a commander deck. Now, now yeah, I suddenly got one. I think that is very perceptive. I forgot that that card was available. Only been taken one out of 12 one. times. <laughs> Wow. It's artifacts and enchantments, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't... I mean, in her deck, it is great, right? Casting it for one mana after you have the Anarchomancer in play or casting yep. it off of the uh, off the Burning Tree Emissary. It's going to mm -hmm. be fantastic. Um, but yeah, in general, I think in 1v1, it's probably not strong enough. But again, in her deck, it seems great. It'll yeah, help absolutely. Us keep going. Yeah, like, I could see this being played... At, like, is it doesn't play a long game but a grixis control deck or a just guy control might and if you can leverage this around turns like let's say three or four that that might be decent there but there are probably better options so eric levine uh it's interesting last time that this happened uh he didn't take transmute he took uh what, what's the modern version of it from Mir scars of mirrodin block that is a bad version of this card oh it's not shape and no. it's reshape 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 yeah yeah last time he took reshape over transmute artifact and has never lived it down ever since uh, so oh it's, it's no nice, it's nice to see him take the transmute over the reshape oh well, he just wasn't playing the egg combo deck to uh, make reshape good correct yeah he just he just forgot that it existed so the person <laughs> literally stephen hagen took it right next to him uh, oh, just oh. immediately after it was, it was very funny oh no there's merchant scroll okay so yeah so it does the Merchant Scroll signals that uh, STI is going to be on that kind of instant operating instant speed deck until Show and Tell gets cast. Yep, that, that's exactly what I was thinking. Merchant Scroll kind of ties the room together. Yep. It is, it, it's so awkward as a kind of sorcery that only grabs instants, um, and mm -hmm. when you presumably want to be leaving up mana. Also, STI doesn't really have a lot of uh, counter spells, right? There's the mana drain, but it doesn't have all the like low cost one mana counter spells. Uh, no, right now there's a lot of value being placed on dig through time in this list. The card that I I think is the best counter spell available probably is spell snare. That'd be my guess if I had to okay. uh, just guess in the dark right now. But I, I don't have my list in front of me. It's for seeing this draft as it's being laid out. Yes, it seems incredibly incredibly powerful, and I think this might be one of those cards that's kind of meta game specific. And I'll put quotes around the word meta game if certain VRDs are going to be a little slower because that's just how they've grown over time, then you might miss a lot 
more often than you will in the STL metagame. True, true. But boy howdy, does that card look really good right now. Right, I mean, can you imagine on turn one, play an island, Sam goes off on turn two, and you just counter her second creature, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I was just thinking about fighting over the Demonic Tutor, the Mana Drain. Yes. Stuff like that. These really powerful and important spells that we're seeing. Uh, okay, and so Enlightened Tutor, interesting this list so far, gets Crucible, Top, Esper Sentinel. Correct. Yep. Uh, I don't know where Brandon's going. Let's see. Is there anything else that kind of... I, I still have him on this Wheels deck, given the Time Twister and Hull Breacher. Yeah. But, da I mean, he, he can't run Leovold, really. Doesn't have the mana for it. Uh, is this a Grixis Wheels deck somehow? No, I think it's Jeskai. There's the Volcanic into Plateau pick immediately. Correct, and the Enlightened, obviously. Yeah. Yep. I, mm, I don't. I, don't I know. would have questioned being Jeskai if the Volcanic Plateau picks weren't made. Yeah, no, you're, you're spot on, obviously. And Expert Sentinel as well. Like he's for sure Jeskai. Because the only red card thus far is Dak Faded. True. True. Yeah, that's fair. So, it could still have been an Azor deck in disguise. Uh -huh. We but without those two back-to-back -back dual picks. Okay, so this is... Now we're at the interesting point where we think this could be uh, some form of tempo deck. Not Brendan's deck, but... Uh, yeah, Cody's. Cody's. Jester. Yep. I think so, yeah. I mean, given, given the Dovin and... like, There's a lot of kind of controlling elements here. Uh, I still think Spirits is the most likely, even though I'm sad about the Knowledge Pool dream not yeah. necessarily being alive. No, I like the idea of Spirits because right now you have two creatures with Flash. And is there a spirit that gives other spirits flash? There is. is there there's the Lord. Quick... I, I don't. I think it's. I think it gives all of them flash. Yeah, there's a quick sliver for spirits. Yes. Uh, there's there's Not the rattle chains. It, it's a two mana one three maybe. I'm gonna go have to look at MTG decks and figure out. Yeah. <laughs> find a spirits list. Find that modern spirits list. Okay, Dovin's veto. That's, I mean, okay. given, given the number of blue-white players at the table, it's probably a good pickup. Normally, you can float that to very late, uh, but there are at least three other players that, or at least two other players that would want it, so it makes sense to be yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. Knight's Whisper, nice. Okay. Man, Common is really just drafted in, like, it's 2012, it's great. I really like it. <laughs> it's just, like, my heyday. Oh, man, just wait to see Skeletal Scrying. Wonder, we're trying to find the uh, we're trying to find the spirit lord that gives other spirits flash if that thing exists. Vendillion clicks a good pickup. Mm -hmm. Only if you can spell it correctly, though. That's the hard part. Well, you got the second word correct. Yeah, there's one L. I think is the. There it is. Cool. Yeah, because we saw Brazen Borrower go already, so Vendillion click makes the next most sense out of that spot. You know, Bitter Blossom plus Vanillion Click, is he just going to go, is this actually a fairy's deck? Just Fae? Yeah, get Fairy Conclave next. <laughs> Wait, on theme, isn't Oko a Fae? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a Dryad or whatever the main oh, okay. Dryad is. Uh, is this, is it Rattle Chains? I, I said it and I didn't think Rattle Chains was the answer. No, Rattle Chains protects something and it has Flash, but, oh no, no Rattle, okay, Rattle Chains does it is Rattle Chains. Flash. Yeah, so Rattle Chains okay. gives everything's flash, but it's not the one that pumps the team. That's the one three for two. Yeah. Also, Rattle Chains has never been taken, apparently. <laughs> Brendan has talked about a Jeskai Flash plus Rector list, and Emmy makes sense there. So, uh, Academy Rector? Right? Uh, Academy Rector. Not Arena Rector? I Yeah, I cannot imagine. We're not getting Planeswalkers? Yeah, I was looking to see what artifacts, though, he has. Uh, and there's not really one there he had. Well, uh, Academy Rector gets uh, enchantments. Okay. okay. That's how you win with, like, the giant battle of Wits pile. I see. Okay. That makes sense. So is it is it Academy Rector into Omniscience to win? The, the mention in chat is Flash plus Rector, so maybe? Okay. That seems fine. Oh, hey. Thanks, thanks for hosting, Xavier. But that, that speaks to the show and tell pick, right? We talked about that early, the common uh, common pairings you see. Yep, Academy Rector gets omniscience. That makes sense. Yep. Opt is interesting. Yeah, opt over consider. I don't I don't know what's right or wrong, but that's definitely an interesting choice. I have my feelings on consider, and it is based entirely on whether or not you play Stoneforge Mystic and Cauldra Complete in your list. Okay. I would rather bottom Caldera Complete than bin Caldera Complete. That makes complete sense to me, yeah. 
I'm not a pro player, so Ooh. probably wrong. So that's just gut feeling. No, that sounds right. Uh, I think you could also like worry about mill in the field, whether you have any graveyard, but balance oh, is yeah, a big yeah. boy that drops. I, in all caps, yeah. that is sending a message. <laughs> I mean, balance is the card that won him the last VRD that crowned him champion. So. Oh wow. Okay. Although this 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 draft isn't going to be the one that will count for uh, for championship. Brandon gets to hold on to that for two more months. This still obviously he still wants this one. Yeah. So with balance, do we expect to see more planeswalkers from this list? Because it's the only type that gets around it, correct? Uh, or artifacts. Artifacts are the classic. Artifacts and enchantments are the classic ones. Oh, and enchantments. Okay. Yeah, artifacts, enchantments, and walkers are the three that you're going to want. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's just really good, right? It has like a lot of different options. You can uh, you can ditch your whole hand and then balance yep. them away. You can time twister, play your cards, and then balance them. You can. Uh, get stuck on lands and just kind of half armor again them. And I think mm -hmm. the most common mode is you just clear the field to let yourself have a couple more turns. Exactly. It's Last like the white version. Oh, time. And we said Treasure Cruise Adel Levine. That, that seems like a good pickup. Uh, yeah. Oh, Flusterstorm. Oh, Flusterstorm might be the best counter spell actually that was available. Even better than the other one. Spell Snare. Bet. Okay. Better than Spell Snare. Yeah. So. Uh, there was mention when Gristlebrand was taking that nobody is in a reanimator lane, and that's correct. So thus far, nobody has really signaled reanimator, but with show and tell in that list, it continues to speak to the idea that we're just going to play around effects like that. Yeah, I totally with you. True Nade Nemesis, I think, was arguably the best creature for a long time as well, and now it has fallen mm -hmm. down to 17th. Uh, it's still very good, but obviously much slower. I usually pair True Nade Nemesis with an equipment package. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is very good, obviously, if you do that. Hey, thanks for the follow, Wandering Wolf. Blood Braid up. Okay, yeah, so Sam Sam is fully committed to that gruel beatdown plan at this point. Yeah. And right now, everything besides Questing Beats Beast gets hit off of the Blood Braid? Yes, that seems right to me. That is really nice. I, obviously, the Veil of Summer it would not feel great, but besides that... Veil, or the I, Red, but yeah. Red, depending on what turn it is, Red could still be very good. If it was Pyroblast, it would always have a target. <laughs> yeah, but who cares if you actually cast it or not? That marginal corner case. Fair point, fair point. But yeah, Blood Raid into Reb, killing whatever creature they have is pretty strong. Oh, yeah, that's outstanding. That is fantastic. Do you think we'll see a guttural response out of this deck? Yeah, I would expect to see it probably like pick 40, though. Yeah. Uh, Wandering Wolf, thus far, yes. Sam is the only player signaling a red base uh, we're seeing Brand brandon brandon has some yeah we're seeing some splashes but i don't think anybody's as dedicated that's right? true that's true yeah we have we have a i actually think the color representation is pretty good in this one there's not any wide open lanes like red is probably the most open no uh, black is oh, also sorry, yes, yes. relatively black is also relatively open but i think like mm -hmm. steven and common are keeping that close enough down yeah, we do have two yeah. wanderers in the chat, so yeah, we, have, we have a wolf and a winder. <laughs> and Steven is also doing his best to represent green. True. Sam's lending a little bit of uh, a power to that as well, but I think green is very well represented thus far in the draft. Mm -hmm. Unless you wanted to play like Leobold and a little bit of, you know, I guess kind of an elf strategy around that, I don't think we could really expect to see a lot better representation of green in this draft than what we're seeing. So, so with things kind of slowing down after pack one, let's let's maybe run through what we think the players are on. So we have oh absolutely Talon sitting here, uh, just taking all the blue counter spells, just doing some kind of blue control list. Yes. Uh, we got Sam sitting on a Gruel Aggro Smash plan. Uh, which yep. We'll see exactly which direction it goes, whether it's really low to the ground or it's more in this four slot. Mm -hmm. uh, Levine on the artifact uh, time vault, kind of doing the money ball thing of just taking the best available card, but some kind of blue black uh, tutor into time vault deck. Yes, there's a base there. STI, is this, we don't know necessarily. We know it's a show and tell list, but we're not sure what direction it's going to go yet. I think we're going to see Shell Dock Isle used in the same capacity as show and tell, if I had to guess. Okay. So we might start to see some velocity cards get picked up. Because mm -hmm. um, Dig Through Time doesn't bin, they go on the bottom, right? Uh, dig Through Time goes on the bottom, yes. Yeah. So we might see some more velocity. There's Consider. Okay, there's one of them. Yeah. Uh, then Brandon, Brandon is sitting here on doing Brandon things, right? We know it's some kind of wheel deck, uh, but there's yes. a balance, there's a couple of walkers, some kind of blue-based uh, wheels deck that has control elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd expect a walker takeover plan eventually. Like, that's the mid to late game plan. Mm -hmm. I have Jester on either a knowledge pool uh, control deck or a, uh, a spirits deck. 
Yeah, I, I think I would lean spirits, or if not spirits, then this might be the kind of like Bant's tempo deck. I think we still have the opportunity to go green. Oh, sneak attack just taken. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. So Brandon, Brandon definitely going. I, no, actually, I have no idea. I have no idea where Brandon's going. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the, the, the common, common. I thought was going to be on a black white uh, creature hand disruption deck, but it mm -hmm. seems also splashing into blue. So we'll see what happens out of there. But well, the blue splash so far is only remand. Correct. And there's not really anything to. There's polluted delta is the only card that fetches for it. Correct. With no duel to back it up. Right. And there's then, a scrub land. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so like that's it's fine as a second duel land, but. Mm -hmm. Um, so Stephen Hagen, and then lastly, there we thought was going to be on some kind of uh, what, what was the list you said he was on? Jorn Snow Stasis. Okay, so we'll see if that happens, or if he is just fully committed to the fairies plan, and that's why this has nymphs and uh, and Oko <laughs> hanging out over there as well. Maybe he's just on a theme deck. Yeah, the the Nissa who shakes the world isn't so out of place in this list that it's interesting. It just allows steven to make so much mana that i don't know what the plan is for it yet i think it's there as a win con of just i'm gonna make three threes and kill you with it yeah just the, the plus right that's uh yeah. yeah he he really he thinks anissa is in the top 10 walkers um in this mm -hmm. format and i don't think i agree but it is very powerful once you get to five mana yep so uh we see dryad and steven's list so we mentioned this from uh, when we were watching Sam draft much earlier, Sam looking at Chill and I can never remember the name of the other card, but warmth. my question... Yes, Warmth. So a question I had was, is it a power move to just take Boil the way things are shaking up? Give it... I mean, so I think early on it was widely considered that, yeah, those like land destruction cards are fantastic, uh, but now we have to look at modern mana bases and the amount, of, the amount of lands that people will pick because they want to have mm -hmm. consistent mana that don't have a basic type uh, means that things like Boyle have fallen way down on the list, right? Because there's just so uh, many, like, like buddy lands and, uh, like, the, um, what are they called? The Horizon Canopy lands. Um, yep. Like, there's just so many of those types that produce colors, even, like, running all the way back to Caves of Poilos, right? There's just so mm -hmm. many lands that don't get hit by that, and we have a lot of people on three-color lists that I think Boyle has gotten a lot worse. Understood. So, basically, the only... It would just be a spike pick against Steven's Dryad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I think it'd be fine against a lot of decks, but I think you mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a backbreaking game that sets them back from four to zero. It would probably set them from four to two. It's kind of what, what about, happens. Got it. What about Blood Moon and or Price of Progress? So Price of Progress, I think, is incredibly good and underdrafted. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't... You, you kind of got to want to be in a deck that is going to play mostly basics for those cards to be good. And yep. we haven't seen people commit hard to the mono red deck. When they do, they run those cards. Okay. But yeah, I, have, I haven't seen a lot of like one or two color decks that run mostly basics. Yeah, because right now all we're looking at from Sam's deck are fetch lands and Taiga. Wow. Yeah, you're you're right. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're right. That she'd be very good. I don't know if she wants Blood Moon, uh, but she definitely would be great with uh, with uh, parts of Press of Progress for sure. Yeah, I, like that's a card that always seems underserved. I agree. I totally am with you. I. Price of Progress is my number one card for inclusion in the modern. Um, after, oh course, yeah, I think you ban the fetch lands, but if you don't ban the yep. fetch lands, then I think Price of uh, Price of Progress would be amazing. I think when we were talking about Modern Horizons two on the podcast, we were looking at cards that, that they could possibly be added to the format, and I think we danced around days. Um, and I'm kind of glad it didn't come into the format with the power level we saw come out of Modern Horizons two because yep. this was all speculation before we really got into spoilers. I think Price of Progress and or Fire Blast were on my short list to add to modern because burn was already kind of on its way out mm -hmm. it was a deck it was a, it's still a pillar of the format um you know wandering wolf, wolf games uh, a personal friend of, of mine and the cast uh she will play burn until she dies like yep. and i think ta after talking with her and some other people it seems like a very easy move into the format Absolutely. but it also makes jeskai tempo control etc a lot better when they can also be playing it with a um snapcaster mage so oh jaster taking subtlety this is subtlety. a great pickup um and this again signals the kind of push towards a spirit style deck of instant okay. speed blue creatures what about chain of vapor does that really signal anything like the um the afr mage mechanic like where no. you can uh because uh, it doesn't it doesn't go off in the same way uh because you need to actually have something to bounce each time in the same yep. unlike chain of smog 
Um, Chain of Vapor, I think, is just like the best bounce spell. So like, mm -hmm. as opposed to Echoing Truth or something like that. Yes. Uh, so in general, Chain of Vapor goes into more combo decks that are trying to go off. But it might just yep. be that this is a... Uh, I am going to be able to protect my creature with Chain of Vapor so I can bounce my thing and then bounce your thing. Or it yes. could be that it's uh, it's just the best card and want to clear blockers. Yep. Which makes sense. Like, I never really worry about the chain back of Vapor because it's such a resource-intensive yes. uh, effect. So we see Lotus Petal, which is another nod to Tolarian Academy. I don't actually think you really need Lotus Petal for acceleration mm -hmm. into seat of the synod to work with tinker so we might actually still be on a tinker plan yeah i, I think well oh you're saying for for sti yeah no i think you're right yeah. I, think, I think it is uh and i think that the, the taking it now is to stop levine from taking it because otherwise levine would probably want to have the seat of the synod i think sti is actually flanked by two players that would like artifact lands like this true i mean oh. even Hagen. oh okay there there we go we get rid of there it is this is actually so Behind the scenes, over the summer, when I was talking to you guys about coming down originally, uh, Painter Servant is one of the decks I was actively working on, and I couldn't decide if I wanted to be Grixis for the tutors mm -hmm. or Jeskai for the protection and Enlightened Tutor. So starting out with um, what's called a shortcake build in Legacy and extending into blue for Transmute. Okay. Or uh, going Grixis and getting Transmute and Demonic. Yeah, the, the nice thing about Painter Grindstone is just it's so easy to slot into lists, and like mm -hmm. every every card fetches them. So like, uh, the, does is Levine also the one with Ursa Saga? Yes, the Saga yes. also finds one half of the combo. Right. Yep. So we Lotus Cobra into Pyro Pyroblast into Braid. Okay, so Talon is definitely pushing into red. Okay, is Morag the like seven drop Minotaur that gives you another combat step? I know Are it, we... it is a Minotaur. I don't know uh, what what card it is. Fury of Akum. It's six mana. But is it the Landfall Minotaur? It is. Yeah, it's on screen now. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so with Fast Bomb, that's very good. Yep. We're definitely going to get there. So this is now the third card we can't hit with, uh, with Blood Raid. I can't wait to see this go off. I use this in four-color Omnoth EDH. Because you just make a lot of tokens and play a sure. lot of lands. Yeah, I, I bet that deck wishes it could run fast bond though. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, uh, see, Levine takes the painter servant right now. I don't like that pick. I I think you could float that easily another twenty picks. I agree with you. Nobody else is going to take that card. Yeah, I mean, we maybe he's worried about people being very spiteful here, but I don't think so. Yeah, it's in the combo article that you linked uh, earlier in the chat, and like, grindstone is probably the best pairing with painter servant, and then you have things like chaotic backlash, which just costs so much yes. mana. <laughs> Uh, the, I mean, the, the classic is things like Pyroblast, even Hydroblast, stuff like that. Yes. That you could drop in there. The forces slot yeah. in there. Oath of Druids. Okay. That's cool. Okay. I'm all on board with STI's list at this point. So it's Oath into either Blightsteel or, or Grizzlebrand, so probably no other creatures coming out of this list. I would say so, but there's the chance... Uh, there's no Time Walk, so Runescar Demon is kind of off the table, but mm -hmm. Niv-Mizzet Perun might still be on the table. Yes. Also Iona. Uh, is Iona okay, is incredibly yeah. strong in VRD. People tend to be on like one primary color plus a couple splashes. Yep. Uh, and, and the last one would be the um, one of the angels, either a Chroma or the... Uh, what's the, the Esper angel that has all the abilities? I do not know. Uh, I was thinking about the Orzov angel uh, Sphinx of the Steel Wind, maybe? Is that the... Oh, yes, that's a, that's that has all the keywords, protection from red and from green. You play it out of the sideboard in Legacy Reanimator against the Delver matchup. Mm -hmm. I could see that card being in the sideboard in the Oath list. Or you tinker into it. Humility. Oh, my goodness. I, I know Jaster likes to embarrass judges, but that's, that's an interesting pick. So this is going to be all creatures lose all abilities and become 1-1, one, one, and then we play the timestamp game? I... In in that in yes I mean absolutely yes but like which which card are you thinking of that uh, that he would have? Um, I really don't know where he's going to go with this. Like when I think of <laughs> humility and I think of effects like this that really play with time stamping, it always comes down to Ink Moth Nexus. Sure, yeah, that's a good one. I 
especially when you play hammer and moderate and you activate ink moth nexus put hammer on it cool it loses flying activate ink moth nexus again now it gains flying get you <laughs> exactly like ooh fracture fractures fractures one that i think we, that steven steven in particular thinks is very underdrafted so i'm sure he's sad to he's happy to see it get drafted um, yeah i i, I think you know, steven has obviously shown that he's going to be on soul tie but i think if he were on bant instead this is a very good pick for either of these seats because you can see all the planeswalkers before you in the draft so pentad prism is great this is a card that brandon kind of pioneered and now has become a mainstay of the format okay. uh and it, it is just very good uh probably like one of the better mana rocks obviously only yep. one time use but uh thought erasure is an interesting one uh i guess if he's sure he has the mana to support it it is better than the alternatives to it um, but generally you would see cards like uh, Check for Traps and things ahead of this one. Unless the okay. Surveil is very important to him. Oh, I didn't even think about the Surveil on that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard mana requirement. Um, basically you're paying, you're translating a colorless into a blue, or a generic into a blue in order to get a Surveil. And that's, yeah. okay. that's interesting. So th that signals to me that he cares about the graveyard more than I thought he would. I guess with the, the decks he's seeing in front of it, it makes sense. It's not like everybody's going to play out of the graveyard, but you have a Snapcaster Mage floating around. You have whatever STI is going to be doing, possibly playing out of the graveyard. Well, but, I mean, Steven, Stevens will only surveil himself, right? So he has to... Uh... Oh, 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 sorry. I thought it exiled, not discarded. I'm no, sorry. No, no. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it just, it's a, it's a mini scry. Yes. Okay. A mini consider. <laughs> True. Okay, so lightning uh, bolt from Brandon. That's that probably makes Sam not feel great. Yeah, letting it. I, but it's a card that Sam can let go for so long. It plays into the plan of surging the the, the reckless book bushwhacker from Oath of the Gatewatch. But I don't know if you really need to be going to the face if you're just going to be playing to the board. That's reasonable. Yeah, his her creatures are going to be doing more important things than yeah. a bull would do. I want to go back to the pentad present pick. So. Yeah. I love that this card has come up in VRD, and in Steven's list, it looks even better because you have Oko and Urza ahead of it. So exactly. Pentad Prism never runs out of utility. I'm totally there with you. Also, his his deck is a really intense mana requirements. Yeah. So Prism covers those problems as well. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's really really good in Steven's setup, and I, I think this speaks to somebody of like Steven's caliber in this draft that spent so much time building this list mm -hmm. and looking for all the angles. The frantic search is an interesting one there. I think Brandon probably would have wanted that to go along with the academy, uh, but obviously mm -hmm. STI it just is more card velocity, like you said for Shellback Isle. Um, yep. It doesn't necessarily mean he's going to go reanimator, but it does set up that as a possibility. Yeah. Is is this draw two discard two or is it draw draw two, two discard, discard two? Okay. Uh, and on tap three, so it's a free spell. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I remember that part. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, the good part. Right. That's that's the reason you run it with high tide or all the other things. Exactly. Exactly. Trinket Mage very makes a lot of sense getting get either yep. the key or the the uh, grindstone. So there's Trinket Mage and Treasure Mage. Treasure Mage gets six or more. Is there a, a mage in between? Is it Trophy Mage? There's Trophy Mage gets three, I believe it is. Three. Okay, and we have nothing that costs three yet in Levine's list. Yeah, oh, Grim the, Monolith is two or three. Uh, Grim Monolith is two. two? It's a basalt okay. is the three man one. But yeah, I, I wouldn't expect Trophy Mage to get taken. Destiny Spinner. That's a great card. Oh boy. Uh, with the amount of blue decks that are floating around, of course, like always, yep. uh, it's going to be very important. Um, also, and it costs one less off the Anarchomancer. And it's going to start turning lands into elementals for mm -hmm. an additional win con. Yeah, the elementals aren't going to be huge, right? They're going to be two twos. Uh, oh no, just one once. Uh, but still. No, no. no? Course of course you have <laughs> Okay, there it is. You were right the first time. Yep, two. Uh, fragmentize, okay, so that's acting opposite to this plan, so. Uh, oh, and fast bond. So we have three enchantments. Thank you. True, true. So Spellseeker. Okay. Spellseeker is going to be fetching, I don't know what yet, but cards. Wait, is it recall? Uh, Spellseeker, can it get, can it go that low? I thought it did. Uh, two or less. Okay, yeah, so two? it gets recall. That's a good backup. Uh, Flusterstorm for additional protection, and there's no color restriction on it, right? So you get mm -hmm. Pyroblast, the Braid. Yeah, Spellseeker is great. It's a great Brainstorm. Pickup. Yeah. Fragmentize, it can even pick up as well. I gotta look up Fragment. Uh, it's it's the disenchant, oh, okay. the good disenchant. Yep, the disenchant equivalent of uh, Nature's Claim. Yep, exactly. Or the white equivalent. Collector, oof. Oh, that's a great card as well. Yeah. 
Is that early? No, I think that's probably late even. Okay. Um, so collect it, null run effects are just incredibly strong. Yes. Yeah. It just feels like because we have like force of vigor and some other really high high power options in the format, Oof might be a little early, but nope, it's basically right on time. Yeah, my intuition was wrong. It's it's actually right on time. Yeah. Model but, and mixture. That's a good one. Wait, let's see when null rod gets taken. Null rod's usually around twenty, so a r null rod was very early this draft, and like that's what yes. threw me off. Null rod was super early. Uh, GSE is still on the table. Yes, it is. And Force of Vigor should be coming around right about now. I think Collector okay. Oof and Force are both... I think Collector Oof is better than Force, just in the uh, dark. Um, but yeah, I think they're both like they're both very good. I think they are extremely <gasps> good and... Did you see that high tide? Yes, yes I did. That's, that makes a lot of sense with the Frantic Search now. This is so exciting. Ah, oh, we can't let them cast Blue Eyes? Apparently not. Can they cast Charizard? So now, if Brandon's making the heads up play, we'll see if he goes for the Time Spiral, if he even wants it. But if he wants the time spiral, he needs to take it now. Yeah, I don't think there's any way. Pot of grief, nice dark oh, magician. <laughs> I don't think there's any way time spiral doesn't make it past STI on the next round. I agree with that. Hey, there's Charizard. <laughs> Pretty soon somebody's going to take like a Frank Thomas rookie card. <laughs> oh my gosh. Great player, great ball player, terrible team. Um, yeah. I actually have a, I have a binder upstairs with a bunch of Frank Thomas cards that I think I'm, Jason's going to be getting for me t today. At I'm a, a huge, uh, I I grew up in New Jersey in the shadow of New York City. Uh, like so, you can either be a Yankees fan or a Mets fan, and I a Yankees fan till I die, and I am a Don Mattingly fan. <laughs> nice. And the fact that they won a World Series the year after he retired hurts my soul. So disrespectful, yeah. Because he'll never make the Hall of Fame without that win. Correct, yep. All right. Emery Creeper of the lock. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is very curious to me. I don't know what we're going to be doing with Emery in this list yet, aside from bringing back Esper Sentinel, because nobody ever kills Sensei's Divining Top. <laughs> True. You can't. You, you can, literally cannot kill. She can flip it into the graveyard and get it that way. Walking Ballista as well. That could be good. Okay. Well, no, doesn't em Is it cast... Okay, so you can actually repay for Ballista. It doesn't just put it back into play. Okay. Yeah, thank God it didn't put it in play. Yeah. Yeah, so Sneak Attack, Emery. I, I don't know what Brandon's doing here. Uh, but I, I, Joaquin Ballista probably is going to get infinite mana somehow, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Oh, maybe. I, I think it's this deck where I said there's more to come, where, where we're just going to be left in the dark for a while. And I think this is the first time in a, in a draft where I've not been able to identify a primary plan by now. Correct. So yeah, Jaster with Subtlety into Solitude. Definitely on that uh, blue-white flash list. This is starting to feel like a modern deck. Yeah, I yeah, kind of like the modern modern decks, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually totally agree with you. Now, there are Elementals, which does not play with any of the Spirit cards that we were talking about before. Yeah, I think that the Spirit Dream is dead. I think this and is it's the blue-white flash. Yeah, and it's too early to start asking the question, how do you win? Because we do have some very good options here, but Stoneforge was... Oh! There's a way to win. Yep. Ah, oh, I love that card. <laughs> philosophical concepts. You are absolutely right, Winder. <laughs> the last three picks on philosophical con concepts. Yeah, Lavinia I normally don't like, but given the, like, show-and-tell and, and, uh, and other cards that are sneaking around here, it could yep. eventually be useful. I know, obviously, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't stop show-and-tell in particular, but there's kind of a lot of these... Uh, there's a lot of other cards that it will slow down, right? So yeah. Some, like Sam's game plan when she goes Burning Tree, for instance. There's a lot of just like mm -hmm. weird hate that it'll catch. I, yeah, I absolutely love Lavinia. I thought this card was going to have much more of an impact on Modern and Vintage than mm -hmm. it did. And right now people are actually moving back to Lavinia and Vintage, which is great. They only move back to two copies, which kind of blows my mind because it seems like you want to have access to four. You want that card on turn one to shut your opponent down. But, right, because, yeah, it's not very good once they've dumped their hand. Exactly. So what I'm curious about here in this list is right now we're seeing a lot of creatures that hold equipment really well. True, true. And Stoneforge Mystic is already gone, but in equipment, the equipment package, i.e. all the good ones any that aren't Skull Clamp, are still available. We have a true name nemesis that's been taken already. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of very good creatures that hold equipment, and I'm curious to see where a lot of those pieces are going to go. 
Yeah, and, and Jitte is already like in it. In, given there are three Crete decks that would be very happy with Jitte, it's yep. a bit surprising that it's running three rounds late right now. But this, I think that will be the bellwether for uh, like it's the best equipment uh, that can be cast fairly. So yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, that's I not expected true. Skull Clamp as well, but yeah, this is the best open one. Yeah, I, I actually thought uh, Talent would have picked up Jitte. That Jitte and True Name Nemesis is you know a match made in heaven. It is. It's, it's pretty slow for this format because like you need to get the true name out on turn three ish, and yep. then uh, and then cast the Jitte and go for turn four, um, and it's also much stronger against creature style decks, which we aren't yes. seeing a lot of so far. Like the my yeah, absolutely. My thought behind Jitte in that deck is this: the talent looks to be playing a deck that wants to go to the mid to the late game. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to force the Jitte as early as possible to kill someone. You might actually just be using it to gain some life, totally, and stay and stave off an assault so i think it does cut both ways if it lands early it's amazing against a lot of the other creature decks in the format otherwise i think we might see a lot of the plus for two life going around that makes sense yes yeah, for talent i'm not sure i'm not sure what um the the deck has a lot of very powerful cards but i think in getting in this land fight early on there's just a lot of open questions about how how does talent live to the mid to late game right that's that seems scary to me like I, yes I, I, I want to see more answers um, more generic answers, right? Because there's a lot of like specialized answers like Pyroblast, but I want to see yes. things that can keep them alive until the late game against the entire field. Yep. Uh, they picked Path because I think that was the only removal spell of that quality left to them. Prismatic right. Ending and Swords being taken beforehand, I believe. Let me... Uh, you're right. Path got taken. Yeah, Prismatic Ending, then Swords, and then Path with the three. Yep. In round 10. Yeah, so until we... Like, we're looking at like oust and condemn or fateful absence for that matter okay this is actually a card i am completely unfamiliar with uh it, it's the investigate one uh oh okay a two mana exile creature or destroy a creature or walker oh okay it's from afr which is not afr uh, midnight hunt which is why i'm not that familiar with it mm -hmm. it's What's also very hard to spell yes apparently a hero's downfall is kind of the equivalent of this no, no, the two mana one, uh, color son of black, destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. Uh, creature or planeswalker three or less. Uh, I'm thinking of abrupt decay, but I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. Eliminate. Eliminate. Okay. Winder coming in hot in chat. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, eliminate's great. Okay. Cemetery. Is this the green? That's the green black mana from... producer? Is that right? No, I think it turns your lands into creatures. Wait, maybe it does both. I think I play this in my pre-release. It is really good if it's with the card I think it is. Uh, I do not know. Let's see, what is this card called? Cemetery Prowler. I've never seen this card in my life. We haven't we haven't done the review show for Crimson Vow yet, so we haven't talked about it. It is not the card I thought it is. Okay. Okay, three mana, vigilance, three four. It hits, does some graveyard hate, and it makes your creatures cost. Oh, makes everything cost less based on what it exiles. That's a yeah. really cool card. I'm very curious to see how this card is going to be used. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's a mid range card for sure. It's like, but that's a lot of text. This kind of feels like Questing Beast, and just that it has a bunch of stuff, and it might be good enough by adding up everything. Yep. I thought the Green Cemetery would probably be the most useful. The second most useful one of the cycle, the Red Cemetery, I thought would be the most useful one because it shocks whenever a player plays a spell mm. that shares a type with it. Oh, we got Tide Hollow Scholar. Yep. Okay. The, 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 we're back on it. The Mesmeric Fiend plan is, is live at this point. Yep. Uh, and yep, there's the Geist of St. Traff pick from Jaster, and there's a, a good comment from chat about this, which is just, there are too many colored pips in this list to possibly take advantage of both Sol Ring and or Monocrypt. Yeah, I think I think what probably happened is Karn got taken, and Karn was the game plan. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if I had to guess about where Jester's going, and then Jester jumped back. I mean, uh, Cody played the green-blue flash list in his yep. first draft, and has really, uh, really did did good work with it. Yeah. Oh, Jar. Memory Jar. Jar's a good one with the as another wheel. Yep. Cunning Wish. So we're going to the sideboard. This is the card that I tweeted about that I'm. I, I really hope somebody would draft. Uh, oh, City of Traders from Levine. Ooh, nice. Okay. Is that... Has Ancient Tomb already been taken? Uh, I want to say yes. 
Yes, it's an STI deck. It was okay. their ninth pick. Yeah. Yeah, Levine's fighting a lot of people, but yes. ag agreed with, with Helen uh, that everything's looking very good for him as well. Yeah. Yeah, Cunning Wish is a really cool card. Uh, I think it kind of, unlike some of the other, like, unlike Karn, which makes you draft really well, I think Cunning Wish kind of encourages you to draft more main deck cards than you should be running, but mm -hmm. it's still very good. Yeah, it's your second copy of a lot of really good spells. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Punishing Fire? Okay, so we'll see Grove of the Burn Willows come from Sam at some point? Almost absolutely. Monastery Mentor from Talent. I think... And Young Pyro? Okay. okay. So that's... Now, now we know what Talon's doing. But not signaling red thus far, missing out on all the red actual duels. I think the majority, if not all, the shocks are still available. I mean, they, they have two already off of the Arid and Bloodstain, so once you throw one mountain in there, they have the three requisite. So okay, it's pretty yeah, yeah. And there's already the Braid and the Pyroblast there. Yep. I, I, I never... Mm. They, they signaled Splash to me because they're just protection spells for whatever they were trying to do with the cards above. That's it's just kind of like Dak Faden, which doesn't totally signal red in my mind. But with Young Pyromancer, we know absolutely. Yeah, I think Green Sensing is going to be a great pickup for Sam. I also don't... Like, Steven would probably take it, but I don't know. There's not a lot of competition for it. Court of Bounty. What is this card? Oh, the courts are really neat. They make you the Monarch, first okay. and foremost. And then they have an ability that increases if you are the monarch. Wild. Okay. That's really strong. Yep. I mean it costs four mana, so Yes. This is not this is not the kind of like explosive eight whack deck I expected to see out of her. Uh no. But it's gruel smash. I think they're we're looking at a an early game aggro deck that wants to be able to play a late game plan with punishing fire into court of bounty. That makes sense. Uh, it, or here's another thing. We talked about Eureka up at the top, I believe, and how, generally speaking, when you cast Eureka, you lose. Mm -hmm. um, Court of Bounty into Morag. <laughs> true. That, that is very That true. is a thing. Well, it's um, the end of your upkeep, though, so you have to wait a full turn. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, the Landfall, you don't have to. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, but I, wait, you're saying... Oh, because in the second half of it, I'm with you now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you're the Monarch, you can put a creature into play, right? Yep, that's true. And you just get the Landfall off of it. The courts are this really cool cycle of cards, and I love looking at them for uh, like the podcast in general. Because I like, for me, EDH value is a thing. Like the EDH is the format Watsi seems to be designing for right now, and I think the courts are these this really unique cycle yes. from Commander Legends that got some really great design. The blue one specifically, you mill ten if you're the Monarch. Wow, that's insane. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is a cycle that they might actually just continue to iterate on because it's a like, wonderfully crafted cycle for EDH. Yeah, absolutely. And if they want to push a Monarch, then yeah, it seems great. Yeah. So Levine took Swan Song, an SDI that tried to take Flusterstorm, yeah. uh, and probably is now looking at a list of counter spells trying to find the next best one because Flusterstorm is obviously taken in round 16 by Talon. Yeah. Like, miscalculations, fine, but not good here. Um, Force Spike is probably going to keep terrible. standing for, uh, for Spell Snare. Yep. If you're looking for a one mana, has, Dispute's already been taken, right? Yeah, they got to get it in 14 by Hagen. Okay. Uh, Swan Song nope. is, is, is right about where it is. Oh, Thought Scour. Interesting. Yep. Nope dodge on the counter spell into Thought Scour. Thought Scour is one of those, I mean, probably good in STI's list. Uh, I don't yep. know if, if if STI will do the uh, the Mental Note, which is my personal favorite. Uh, tech from Doomsday, uh, which is the thought scour that's not misdirectable i love mental note i put i have it in my cube over thought scour mm -hmm. i think it's yeah it, it is a, it's a card that people have to read every time but it's it's a yep. blast drc yeah that's a good one that seems way late malevolent hermit that's the modern horizons 2 <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna pull do, dragon's rage chandler because that card I, seven yeah. on eight drafts okay okay i do want to bring up something before i talk about drc so going back to sam's pick wandering winder mentions fast bond which we have, Zern Orb, which we don't, Ramming Up Excavator, which we have, Grove of the Burn Windows, which which looks like it's coming up, and Punishing Fire, mm -hmm. which we have. We are a, we are a land sacrifice effect and Grove of the Burn Willows away from going infinite. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she's already has the... She's one Zern Orb away from going infinite life, but yeah, infinite damage, yep. sure, why not? Let's do that too. Dark Slick Shores off Common, that's a great pickup. Wanting to yep. stay close to the ground, being an Esper deck. Mm -hmm. 
Malevolent Hermit, I think, is actually very good. I, I didn't remember which card this was until I saw the picture. But yeah, this card Same. is strong. I thought it was the Black Hermit uh, from Modern Horizons 2 that made squirrels. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was the green one that, like, did something deranged Skinner. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. What's the backside of this card? It has disturb. Uh, it becomes a 2-2 two -two flyer uh, that I think... I, I can't flip it right here, but... Does it become Spike Tail Drake? Mm. Sack it to counter a spell again? That sounds right, but let me double check. Malevolent yeah. Hermit backside is... No, non-creature spells you control can't be countered, and oh, it's okay. a 2-2 two -two flyer. Okay. That's not bad. I, I think this is better overall than... Um, what's the fairy that sacrifices to counter with... Um, not Undying. With Persist? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the four-mana one. It's... Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it always sounds like it's a legendary creature, but it's not... Glandalendra Archmage. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Wandering Winder. All right. Steven in on Ashiok Dream Renderer. Vault of Whispers. Vault of Whispers is a good one. Because, yeah, I mean, obviously Steven lost out on the Seat of the Synod. Mm -hmm. But um, Levine or STI might have taken the Vault, so that makes sense. Yeah. That Karn Scion of Urza Minus just keeps looking better and better and better the longer Steven drafts cards. It's very, yeah. I've, I've been, every draft, I think Karn moves up slightly in my radiance because I've never mm -hmm. seen it be bad. And it's just, I, I think it's about as good as Jace. And that 90% that of the time you use it, you just draw a card. And that's basically yep. what Jace does in most games, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's obviously a lot more utility out of Jace, but um, Karn being colorless means that you don't have to worry about a lot of the other issues with them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Seacrum Coast completing the cycle there. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah, it speaks to what you said before, which is Dark Slick basically signals that we're going to be playing more blue. And we saw Seerum Visions. You brought that up. Negate into... Uh, sorry. Seerum Visions into Negate. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we will get around to the Brain Maggot and uh, Mesmeric Fiend portion. I think so. There's, there's, there's so much time. And, and taking the... Uh, like, maybe not, because Tide Hollow Scholar is worse than both of those. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it is bigger. Uh, but once you have Skull Clamp, it might be not as good. I don't know. We'll see. It's weird. I think the value... Like, Skull Clamp value of drawing two cards is amazing, but when you clamp your Brain Maggot or Mesmeric Fiend and kill them to give the card back while you're drawing two, it doesn't seem the most advantageous. Because mm -hmm. they're both 1-1s, one -ones, right? Uh, the two small ones are, yeah. They're both 1-1s. One -ones. Yeah. But like you give them back... You take a card that you need to t remove early and then give it back to them late. Yeah, yeah, you just hold it for later. Exactly. So you're like, okay, yeah, now you can now you can have your ramp spell or something. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Is this a list you think we would see something like Vindicate in? Yeah, absolutely. Like I don't know I don't know if, if it necessarily if they need it, but yeah, it's it is a really strong card. It clears the way for things. Um I I would expect to see cards like I don't know if it's specifically, but Nether mm -hmm. Void and the Abyss are cards yep. that you could see come out of that. Probably not the Abyss, There's but Nether Void. Yeah, there's your knowledge pool, by the way. Nice, that's great. So Teferi, knowledge pool. And I guess, yeah, there's just, like, flash stuff on top of it. Yeah. Council's uh, judgment question. is a good one. Yeah, it's always good. The question in chat uh, from Cube is better. Will we get to see the matches? We're not going to be streaming them, but they're going to be playing them all in the Discord, and 90% of the players, in fact, I think everybody that's playing today, does allow spectators. So if you go onto the Discord, you can uh, kind of follow along on the chat channel there. And they'll post, like, hey, we're playing this match. So we're not going to be commentating them, but you can go watch them on, on Cockatrice. Oh, this is such a dangerous pick by STI. Wow, brain freeze. Okay, so I'm, I'll am i stand for Storm, 100%, <laughs> okay? Yes. And I have a 360 cube, super tightly curated. There are Eldrazi Titans in that thing, but no brain freeze. It is, oh man. You have the ability still to cast Grave Shot or fire off 10 drills at somebody. And I think Brain Freeze might be, unless there's a way to, to a, a, a Ley Line or um, the, is it Dothy Voidwalker? Dothy Voidwalker, Ley Line. Rest uh, in Peace. Rest in Peace, that one Surgical Extraction. Like there are ways to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, well, surgical extraction—they still get the shuffle. They do. They get—they get the one-time effect. Yeah. But if you have enough brain freeze, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Come on, thousand-year storm. <laughs> Curse of Opulence is an interesting one. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Xenagos the Re 
a reveler. That's because a good one. We got, a, we got an extra A in there. Um, all right, Curse of Opulence is red, and isn't it in standard right now? I have seen this card once. I, it's it's a Commander Legends card, so I don't think so. Oh, maybe. okay. Uh, so it yeah, it gives you Ragavan. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's another okay, way to so, kind of accelerate and keep going early. Yep, and it's going to power up the Destiny Spinner. Sure, <laughs> that's true. It just Daddy. small margins. Uh, I really like. I really like Xenagos as well. Usually, you see this powering up something like Blightsteel Colossus. Like Sam's not going to go this big, but if you cast Tooth and Nail for Xenagos and Blightsteel, that's game. Or an Eldrazi. I am here virtually. Not there in person, and we weren't able to get a uh, video chat working this morning, so I'm just a disembodied voice. Thanks for that. My my kid has been on every stream up to now, so it's nice for him to be able to hop in this one as well. <laughs> That's no problem. Mirage Mirror. Okay. That's interesting. This... Is the Mirage Mirror going to go along with a Dark Depths combo, perhaps? That is interesting to think about. It lasts until end of turn, so it's not like there isn't utility to gain. Um, mm -hmm. I think he could twiddle his Grim Monolith forever if he wanted to. Oh, okay. Okay. You not to say make, that that would... You can also make it a copy of Time Vault, which seems yeah. pretty strong. Yeah, I think that there's great advantage to be had here. Oh, well, now and now we have a three drop to go with Trophy Mage, if we wanted to. Or... Is it Trophy Mage? No. Whatever. Uh, it, trophy Mage would be able to get it. Uh... The middling mage. Yeah, the planeswalker, the reveler, is just like just beats down and uh, and pumps out a constant stream of, of enemies. Oh, okay, that, okay. So that was my mistake. I thought it was the god. Okay, so yeah, we're either gonna pump out two twos or make mana, right? Correct. Yeah, and okay. exactly. Probably, probably in the opposite order is how it's gonna be used. If I yep. had to guess. There's mental note. Nice. Okay, yeah, so STI really, this might be a doomsday list. I, I can hope and dream, but I don't think it is, sadly. Yeah, Cunning Wish only gets instants, right? Cunning Wish only gets instants. Yeah, so we can't get doomsday from the side. Yeah, yes, similarly, okay. Merchant Scroll also only gets instants. Mm -hmm. This might just be like Thought Scour in the main and Mental Note in the sideboard or something like that. Okay. Yeah, Cunning Wish is still presenting this interesting wrinkle where what are we going to hide in the sideboard? Exactly. Because, like, yeah, maybe even, like, a whatever the Living Wish might have been something that would make sense to me. It's like, oh, okay, I want to have an Oath of Druids deck and then be able to Living Wish oh, yeah. for stuff uh, that's not just the, the targets. But interesting. I don't know. Yeah. There's still some questions about exactly what's going to go on. Catchy Triome. There's a Just Guy Triome. Nice. So that might have been taken out from under Talon. Oh, no, not Just Guy. This is the, uh, this is the rug one. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's Teamer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Talon still has the ability to grab the Jeskai Triumph. Mm -hmm. Mystic Gate, so we're going to do a little Indafa? bit of filtering. Indafa might be what it is? <laughs> that's it, yeah. Oh, no. Nope. Indafa is the junk one. What? I have no oh. idea. <laughs> the, <laughs> the names are impossible. Yeah, as, as discussed earlier, neither you know why. Yes. Or I know. Mystic Gate is great, though. Oh, I, th okay. I think the filter lands are the the next best cycle after the originals. I know that mm -hmm. Le Levine is on the um, Levine is on the pain lands, but I think the filter lands are ridiculous. Mostly because I hate three color decks, so I think that in a two color deck, these are ridiculous. Yeah, I think they're amazing. I, uh, it's hard to judge them against something like the buddy lands in a two color deck, right? Be yep. Because they still will do something the turn they come into play, but. Revoker is a, is a great pickup. That's that's one Absolutely. that it's a little late for this draft, but. Oh, yeah. What about something um, like Pithing Needle? Rogrin is the just kind of one. Okay. So Pithing Needle and Sorcerer's Spyglass. Do we usually see them go around the same time as Revoker? No, I don't. No, I mean, Sorcerer's Spyglass, I think, is better. Um, but Pithing Needle, I don't think it goes very often. That's okay. a very weird art for Pithy Neil I've never seen, but... Um, oh, look at that. Midnight Hunt. Okay. Sorceress Spyglass is usually 
uh, is far more common just because you get the utility and the, yeah. the one mana isn't as relevant Ooh, it's not as relevant yeah i like that i was going to ask about urborg to not to we'd see that but i wonder you you mentioned earlier about seeing stats for more recent vrd drafts compared to all time mm-hmm. and i'm curious to know what goes on with uh pithing needle after urza saga comes in for pithing needle after urza saga interesting uh yeah i, I have not, i don't know i have not seen those two go together very often i think that okay. basically the the activated ability removal isn't isn't like the most game backbreaking thing in general i think it's yep. very good against something like time vault um mm-hmm. and time vault urza saga is often a pairing that you'll see together so oh absolutely I, I think that like basically the decks that would want pithy needle due to urza saga are probably the decks that uh people want pithy needle against yep oh yeah and, and absolutely uh Halen picking up uh thopter foundry and sword of the meek with urza is yeah uh, another amazing set of picks from steven there's a lot of like synergy that we've seen here recently in constructed formats around both oko and urza yes yeah his his deck is very good like there's a yep. few cards that uh that are interesting to me oh it's suspicious stowaway we didn't talk about that's one that i've not seen before either oh yeah look at that just kind of it's snuck, snuck in right there without a scene while we are talking about how to spell faithful absence exactly <laughs> uh and yeah amusingly that suspicious stowaway was the card that hid from us it's one that turns yeah, who- into the werewolf Oh, okay. Yeah, who would have guessed Oka was a good card, right? Right, yeah. Come on, Astral Leap. So this is the Daybound one that it, it loots when it hits them. It's unblockable. And on the backside, it's also unblockable as a 2-1, but you just draw a card when it hits. Oh, okay. So you, you don't loot, you just draw. Right, it's a little saboteur. Yeah. Miscast is a really good pickup there. I, I also like Stony Silence. Yeah, Stony Silence is a... Stony Silence along with Revoker. I mean, both mm-hmm. of those are going to be shutting down things. Stony Silence is just a straight-up Null Rod, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. It almost at the, at, it almost feels now like Stoneforge Mystic was uh, a pick to block. Picking up Stony Silence. Yeah, that is interesting. I, 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 I think Stony Silence can be out of the board, so you might just like not cast it if you have a Stoneforge yeah. hand or decide on that package or something. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I agree. I think Stoneforge Mystic was taken because the assumption was Jaster was going to go into it. You might as well grab it early. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. But... And you still have two living weapons to play around it. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, there's not really a risk that somebody else is going to take your batter skull. Yep. Grove is a nice one. Yep, which is uh, expected with the Punishing Fires. Mm-hmm. We see Michael Smith, Vlad, Vlad oh. Levine. Energy Flux is a huge one. This is, a, this is I think, the best uh, the best hate card yep. that is, is around for the artifact decks. It's just attacks, right? Uh, yep. it's, a, it's a yeah. Every every upkeep, everything costs two. Yep. As opposed to Kataki's War Wage, which is only one. Yeah, Kataki is like a lot of the artifacts pay for themselves for a Kataki, so you can just kind of wait it out. With Energy Flux, yep. you cannot wait it out. You get wrecked the next turn. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the nice part about Kataki, though, is when you're looking at a form like this and you have the Moxing kind of spread out, they have to pay for themselves, yes, but they, you can no longer use them in your main phase. That's true. Yeah, it, it, it certainly isn't It isn't a nice card to play against, but it's just no, it's, not, it's at not all. backbreaking in the same way. No. It, it, it also holds equipment, so it, it kind of is a, one of those six to one half a dozen to another. Like, Talon, Energy yeah. Flux absolutely looks amazing, but for somebody like Common, Kataki might be better because it can hold anything they draft from here on out if they pick up equipment that makes sense and levine uh deciding i don't want to i don't want to sweat anymore i'm just going to take my cards uh so uh, megas and vlad is the manifold key yep. both dargo are, uh, the... finishing. dargo is dargo. shipwrecker so this is from commander legends again it's a partner commander i knew that much and i knew it was a giant pirate literally oh my god that was terrible seven, seven mana oh uh, it reduces okay 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 all right so yeah, it's it's this is kind of like the Greater Gargadon of uh, the new Greater Gargadon, I guess. Yeah, and it has Trample, which uh, neither Gargadon have, right? Uh, correct. Yeah, I believe that is true. Yeah. Yeah, the, he he seems fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you kind of like. I, I would love this card to have Flash, so you could do it in response to the removal spell. Um, but like. Oh yeah. It's it seems fine. I, the the trouble is right. Like, are you gonna cast? I guess you cast this once they get a 2-3 out that can block all yep. your stuff. Yep. Um, but you got to like hope that they don't have any removal spells either. 
So uh, there's questions in chat now about what you would sack those creatures. So first and foremost, we have Court of Bounty to be able to just place it into play. After that, we have a lot of treasure makers between Raghavan, uh, Curse of Opulence, and uh, Dockside Extortionist. Yeah, that's wild. The fact that you can sacrifice your, uh, you can just sacrifice the treasure for two is great. Yep. Now, uh, Dark, Dark Side Extortionist only looks at your opponent, so the fact that we're picking up additional enchantments along the way, it's kind of a non-bow for that, but the fact that you're still playing in a field that is littered with artifacts makes extortions pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I don't know how many tokens it's going to make on average. I would guess probably like two, maybe? That's, that's exactly what I thought. I think, yeah, one or two is, is like, two is what you hope for, and one is probably what you get a fair amount of the yeah. time. But. Yeah. And the other nice thing is you can sacrifice creatures to this, too. So I I talked about this earlier with Leovold and playing a small elf shell. Like Some of these creatures are going to get outclassed in time, and sacrificing them to cast this is not a bad option overall anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this link in chat. Uh, we're going to have to be moving down soon, which means we're going to lose sight of the top of it. So... Uh, make sure you have this pick up if you want to be able to keep seeing the top things. There's omniscience. Nice. Okay. So yeah, that, that means that academy is or academy rector is almost assuredly coming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and that speaks to the flash rector combo exactly that was mentioned earlier. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be very exciting. Uh, flash is a card that I feel like we could write like many articles about in this format, but it's one that mm -hmm. has generally not performed as well as it should. Um, but I think that this, this is a great shell for it that actually isn't trying to do like the Protean Hulk kind of combo because that's just too card intensive. You end up having to have seven picks on it and just in a 40 card deck, it's, it's not reasonable to make happen. Yep, uh, totally agree. Uh, is, when is it sacrifice? Is it end of turn? If you do sacrifice, it must pay its mana cost for two. It is immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's weird. It's like if you want to combo out with Flash, it, you mentioned Protean Hulk. I think... Is there a way that you could play Tin Fins with Flash? Uh, Putting Gristlebrand, draw a bunch of cards. Flash, so Flash in Gristlebrand, draw a bunch of cards, reanimate back. I, I think Children you, of Coilos. Second. No, the sacrifice is part of the casting of the. Is part of Flash, so you don't have a time. You don't have time where you have priority in the middle of Flash resolving. Okay. Yeah. So Flash, Flash yeah. is just absolutely like you put it into play and then move it to your graveyard. And then immediately, yeah. Yep. It's not like a Vogue. Yes, exactly. Okay. Lion's, Lion's Eye Diamond. Eye. That's a late one. Yeah. Let's see. Lion's Eye Diamond usually around 15 instead of 27. All right. I made a call that we would see Time Spiral go. And yeah. we have not seen it pick. Uh, yeah, really. I thought in round 22 right there, that felt like the moment. Yep. Katilda is a, is a fun pickup, too. What is this card? What are those? <laughs> so this has been drafted one time. It's only been available for two. Uh, okay. But it is it is a three mana. It, it went in Enchantress last time, so I don't ah. I don't think it was going to be as good in this deck. But this might signal that we're moving back towards spirits. Oh yeah, yeah. If you were wondering about that, where it would end up. Mm -hmm. And then the backside of her, she turns into a uh, an aura that mm -hmm. gives her abilities to another creature. Yes. That's why I was curious about the, the other card with Disturb, because my familiarity with Disturb is that it just passes the keywords over and you, sometimes the activated ability. Urzov Usurkea. Urzov Usurper. This is not the three mana one, is it? It is. Okay, so this is the one that exiles one costs? Yes. Yeah, I thought if this would have been Steven that had taken that, I would have expected it to be Kaya Geist Hunter, the new one. Uh, this kind of speaks to what I mentioned before, which is Vindicate in the list. I think this is just a better Vindicate. Uh, yeah, and Graveyard Hate. I mean, I think the Graveyard... If, if yeah. I were taking this, it would be like, hope to pick up something that costs one or less, and then uh, use it mostly for Graveyard Hate. Yeah. Combal is a great one. Oh, oh man. it's fantastic. So Steven picks up the Sultai Triumph and Overgrown Tomb to base... Like, I can't imagine Steven is wanting for much more in regards to his mana base. It just looks fantastic. Yeah, and he, he's one of those people that I, I think he probably shouldn't get in as many land fights early on as he does um, mm -hmm. because he has such a good depth of, like, a read on when to pick up the lands later. I think that he can basically, yep. like, he's one of the players that some people 
don't necessarily know all the cards and don't know when they should take them and things like that. For yep. him, he's like, okay, yeah, it's round 28. I'm going to pick up the lands I need to fill out my deck. Uh, like, he doesn't need to be sending picks five and six doing that. But, yeah, I don't know. He, he's played in a lot more of these than I have. So, uh, yeah, this, this is me insulting him and complimenting him at the same time. I think it also speaks to the fact that our wheels player is not playing Leobold. So True. there's no competition for a lot of the green, black, or blue, black, or Sultai lands in general outside of Levine. I hope that Steven does play uh, play Leobold at some point here. It seems like it'd be very strong in this list. Uh, absolutely, yeah. But if he sees no other competition for the card, right. he can again push it down, which is the point, the brilliant point that you made. Strict Proctor. Interesting. This is this is a new one, I believe. Or yeah, are we just drafting standard now? I guess so. So, okay, so it's a... Th this can't be the best version of this effect, right? There's there's a three-mana bird. Um, there's Torp there's Orb itself. Torp Orb. But this, carry, this carries equipment. Yes. I don't know. It is a spirit as well, so I think I think we actually were right originally that this is a spirit's deck. And just oh, that was your call. I thought we might have expanded into, into Bant. Yeah, fair. But no, yeah. I think I think this is the Spirits deck. The Catilda yeah. has me like pretty sold as a Spirit at this yeah. point. Yeah, I, I think Catilda into Strike Proctor does though speak to the to what I was saying, which is that something like Energy Flux is so much better for talent, where Kataki's War Kataki Wars Wage is so much better for this deck because it carries equipment. One hundred percent with you there. Yeah, Harsh Mentor is a great one. Uh, that yeah. obviously <laughs> it obviously makes the uh, Time Vault player cringe a little bit when it happens. And a much better pick for this deck than somebody deck than somebody like Sam because Sam's looking to end the game in a turn or two, and Harsh mm -hmm. Mentor just bleeds you dry. Mm -hmm. Arcane Denial is a card that's like a mainstay of VRDs, and people is, really love it. Is this the counter spell Slow Trip? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's it's the one that if you counter your own spell, you can ancestral recall, or if you counter yep. their spell, they get to draw two. Mm -hmm. it, it's fine. I think things like Delay uh, and whatever the new one is, the one that you can, um, it's the Replicate one. That one's also very strong. Okay. Uh, something I was thinking about earlier, and I, I still can't bring up the name, uh, the X spell from Aether Revolt that destroys artifacts. It's like X on a red. Aether Revolt. Um, oh, oh, this is the new Meltdown, right? Yeah, essentially. Like, if you look at Vintage List, they're playing by force. That's yes. it. Like, Vintage List were playing a braid, and then they swapped up by force when they realized that it was just as good, if not better, and got around some counter spells. Oh, there's Magus of the Moon. Ooh, okay. That makes sense. I mean, I think it is better than Blood Moon in her list. Absolutely. We talked about Blood Moon so early in the draft that we didn't really see this kind of creature package come together. I think it's a much better play. Yep. Um, so something like Biforce, is that better than, or use more actually, I won't say better than, is it something that can be played in a VRD format like this? Yeah, absolutely. Biforce, I think, often gets drafted right about half the time. Um, mm -hmm. The card that I think should get drafted more is Meltdown, that I think is about, uh, is usually going to be better than Biforce. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really depends kind of on what you're playing against. If there's a robots player, Meltdown is obviously yep. much stronger. If there is a, uh, if you're playing against a bunch of giant artifacts that are sneaking into play, then by force is better. Yeah. Uh, so we see condemn out of talent, which is something we talked about earlier on. Yeah. When we were talking about like ways to kind of protect and play this spell slinger style game with monastery mentoring young pyromancer. Uh, Delver is still available. Yes. Delver Delver is probably going to be available through the entire draft and then yeah. after the draft too. Yeah, we, we, yeah, exactly. We see SDT and Brainstorm in two different Ponder, Preordain, in four different decks, I believe. There's no way that Talent is going to be able to reliably control the top of their library in such a fashion. Agreed, yeah. Cool, uh, this is a good pickup. Uh, Jasper oh, yeah. just put Suspend in there. That's a little early, given that Levine and STI and even Brandon could easily take Suspend. Hopefully, mm -hmm. he doesn't get punished for revealing that info. Probably hit oh, okay. I didn't, oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, he, he typed it in and hit enter. I think he was trying to type it as like a preloaded, not actually hit enter yet. Oh, yeah, and just leave it there. Uh, so what? this one's going a little off the wall. What about Subterranean Tremors? Ooh, I, I don't think that's that's been... may have been taken once. Um, okay. I think it's far worse, though. It has it's been it, taken. Yeah, it's much worse than Price of Progress for Sam. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just, just it doesn't end the game. Costing five mana for a Shatter Storm is a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want an Earthquake, it's probably better than Earthquake. Okay. It doesn't hit players, though, either, right? Yeah, no, it's... I no. don't know. I, I, I'm not a fan of it, but... 
No, it just plays a longer game plan, which is why I said it's not for Sam, but it's for somebody like, might be for somebody like Talent who's showing that they want to play a bit of a longer game. You know, you, you win quickly after you resolve Mentor in a few spells, but it's not immediate. Uh, and somebody uh, like uh, Curry, who's shown Jeskai as well. No, that makes sense. I, I can see it happening. Um, but yeah, the Padim is, is really showing Eric's depth. Obviously, Eric is uh, is the channel fireball commander uh, or writer. So yep. like he's he's pretty deep on that format. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, pulling out Padim to cover, make sure the time vault doesn't get disrupted is a pretty good call. Yeah, that, that's great. And then Cryptic, just good good artifact or good uh, counter spell, of course. Yep. Um, is it Mystic Sanctuary, the Throne of Eldraine land? Yes, the the blue one that yeah. uh, tutors back to the top of the library. Yep. Is that too slow for? No, it's it's fantastic. Okay. Um, I, the, the difficulty is not so much about the speed, but more about whether you can get the three islands. Um, oh, okay. Because a lot of these decks are running a lot of buddy lands and things that are not don't have the island subtype. So yep. it it usually gets taken around here a little earlier, but mm -hmm. um, I think it has not been as consistent as people would like it to be. Yes. I think you basically have to be in a two-color deck that leans hard blue or mono blue. Yeah, and right, I mean, we are leaning hard blue because we need to cast show until ASAP. We need, we're need. we looking at Shellback Isle, right? There's a lot of blue in this list. I think Oath of Druids might get cast out. But to your point, when it comes to non-basics that have the island subtype, we have Seed of the Synod, which blocks, yep. right? Then we have Breeding Pool, which is on point. Ancient Tomb, Shellback Isle, no go. So I, I think I think it'd be good, we're going to miss it here. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Mystic Sanctuary makes it right because you can still have ten islands pretty easily. Yeah, and GTA. GTA gets taken. Yeah, from neither of the players we thought. No. Yeah. It, I mean, correct. Seat does not have the island subtype, so so seat seat is is a block on uh, Mystic Sanctuary is what I meant. Counter so, is the is the one that we don't always see. That's a pretty cool one. Yeah, just blue black. Yep, that's a yep. negate that drains for two or hits for two. Yep. So yep. So if we if we look at Carrie's list, what can carry that GTA besides DRC and Harsh Mentor? Is that it right now? Emery. Emery can and do Walking it. Ballista. DRC. Uh, you already mentioned that. Emery cool, I guess technically. <laughs> Esper Hello, Sentinel. fellow ninjas. Yeah. Yeah. Esper Sentinel and Hellbreacher are both very good with the two. Ooh, Lear. We got Assassin's Trophy and Lear from Steven. Man, I love watching Steven's picks. I just want to get to Steven's picks faster. Disciple of the Drowned. Is that what it's called? Okay, yeah, this is the, the card that's dominated standard right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, look, it's this is a, a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. Oh, I think it's a good card. I like it. Arlen's Epiphany is running roughshod over standard. Fair point. I run both of those cards in the same list. And that's why. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about this when I was looking at Carrier's list, right? We just picked up GTA. We talked about the creatures that could could carry it mm -hmm. one of them is walking ballista and this list is it's i don't want to say it's unfocused it's not all over the place either but if we're going to pick up some equipment like this i wonder if we'll see something like basilisk collar to work with walking ballista and emery <laughs> that'd be cool I, I don't anticipate it but that would be really neat oh there's cauldra complete the living weapon package is starting yeah i guess losing the jitte probably woke him up a little bit yep selfless spirit that's the protection spirit that you were talking about earlier so we're still very much on that plan yep we're gonna stop the rats I wonder if we'll get a Supreme Phantom. That's the Lord. That's the one I was thinking of earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. That, I, I imagine we will. I think I think at this point, Jester has what 15 picks left. It's just going to be yeah. a spirit, spirits, spirits town. Yep. I'm curious if Jasper Jasper is going to go with just a traditional like. Sorry. I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase this because there's two very distinct spirit decks that were in modern. There is the one that ran a bit of. Eldrazi and that was Bant, and then there's hmm. then there just became the actual spirit deck after we got Supreme Phantom, and I'm kind of curious which way this list shakes out. Yeah, I mean, because if I remember correctly, the, the second version of that ran less disruption, which was just more an aggro deck, almost more like a merfolk style. Yep. Um, and it seems like like this deck still has some of that, but you're right, it's it's mostly kind of swords, days, and there's a couple up there, others up there like Mana Leak. Yeah. Um, but and, yeah, you don't have the density of spell quellers to kind of be the real depth that the, that deck had. Yeah, and the nice part about the Eldrazi thing was it ran Sky Spawner, which is a little bit of ramp in the colors still. You don't have to branch out to green, which that version of the deck did. You can kind of stay compact, and although it's a creature that's outside of your type line uh, for, what is it, Katilda? Mm -hmm. 
it still works really well in this deck. Yeah, it doesn't get protected by rattle chains. Uh, it wouldn't. I yeah. guess it wouldn't surprise me, but it, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. Um, the because ban the reason to do that would be for collected company, right? I don't. I don't think that's going to happen in this one. Oh yeah, it just it just helps a little bit with that with the little bit of ramp that comes off that the scion, right? Mm -hmm. That's what sky spawner make. That's what those little. That makes sense. Yeah. Tokens. That's the only reason I would consider that card. This is a card I did not anticipate seeing today. Feed the swarm. Yeah. Destroy target creature and champion card. Oh yeah, yeah. The is it the new doom blade? I uh, I guess. I uh, yeah, yeah. Not quite. Sorcery. It's relatively new, but it is a it is a way to answer these uh these all these enchantments that are running around. If we have an academy rector, and if we yep. have uh if we have jester on the enchantments as well. So we see the Burning Tree Emissary, which Ooh. was your call from much earlier on, and Into Mystic Confluence, which is a card I thought about and then kind of dismissed as we moved into the middle of the draft when it seemed like people wanted to play like really compact, low mana value decks. Yeah, this is one that I think would have been very good out of Jaster, actually, because you have the two different soul rings that you have in your deck already. Yep. Um, but yeah, Con Confluence, I mean, it, it this is Talon's deck is gonna be very powerful if you get to past turn five, right? And this is again yeah. where I'm really scared that uh, this the Pyromancer and Mentor won't be enough to get to get in there. Yeah, I love the Fire and Ice pick. Mystic Confluence Same. just seems a little much. Is uh, is a branching bolt? It costs three, deals two damage, and you can split it. Like I don't know I what you mean. Branching wanna... bolt hits. That's one that hits flyers and non-flyers, right? Maybe. Uh, it's uh, I might not be thinking of the correct spell. There are a number of red spells that allow you to split your damage. I'm just trying to think of. Oh, that's not even close. Um, eh. Oh, you're, you're thinking of Arc Trail, I think. Yes. Which is yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you can still put Fire and Ice on a Scepter here. We got more picks. Hey, there's, there's By Force. There's this. He named it. Yeah. And Snaring Bridge. Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam. Oh, no. That <laughs> oh, is Snaring no. Bridge. It's also going to sit in the sideboard and just wait for Karn to drop. Yeah. Yeah, so building have... the Karn board at this point, there's it's Nary Bridge. I would expect to see Levine take an uh, a graveyard hate card like Tormod's Crypt or Relic of Progenitus uh, or something. Tormod's Tormod's Crypt was picked in the last uh, run around, so yeah, I would expect uh, Relic of Progenitus. And is it Silent Gravestone? Silent Gravestone. Is, yeah, that's the that's the one after. Or oh, Nihil Spellbomb. Duh, he's in black. That one's good too. Yep. Uh, maybe we can go real deep and have a Phyrexian Furnace run through. Oh. Start making people care about graveyard order. That's true. Oh my god. <laughs> nether Spirit. So... Uh -huh. No, not... Ne uh... Nether Spirit. Nether Shadow are the two. Nether Shadow. That's yeah. the one I was trying to think of. They're both good. Yeah. It's a Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, you named it earlier. And it, there it, it is. Got showed up. Leela. That's a good one. I bet Sam's sad to be missing that one. Oh, uh, where's Eric Clapton when you need him? Oh. <laughs> is that... All right. Lelia. This is the one that uh, draws you a card every turn. Whenever... Or do you have... Whenever it attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your library or your graveyard. Oh. So somebody mentioned um, the possibility of just picking up a late Helm of Obedience. Uh, if Carrie would pick up a late Helm of Obedience with the rest in peace. That's very I wonder, strong, yeah. Yeah. I, it's not like I dis dismissed the comment. I read it, and I was just kind of thinking about what to do with the rest in peace and i think this clearly points to that that so hey yeah i mean Hel helm rest in peace is a good thing in general but i'd like to see some way to tutor for either half of that i don't really see that yet other than just wheeling but i guess uh, like, yeah somebody else already has enlightened right i believe enlightened went it's curry curry okay. has it okay. round 15. in that case yeah no he seems very much on us dark depths is the card that i haven't seen anyone go for yet um, that yeah. normally we would see. That's the that's like the last of the big main combos. You yeah, you mentioned that um, earlier when we saw Mirage Mirror. I thought that might also come from uh, Steven, just because we haven't seen any of the Stasis or the Snow Picks yet, really. And that deck could absolutely lend itself to a quick Dark Depths in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, the question with the Snow Picks is. Since, since we're playing by St. Lotus rules, um, you yep. do actually have to spend a pick on Snow-Covered Island and Snow-Covered Forest. Yes. Um, so I don't know how necessarily if he's going to have the like two to three extra picks that he would want to make Jorn happen. Yeah, I, I, it feels like we've kind of moved past that. 
But the deck as a whole, the the shell that we're seeing from Steven, I think also does speak of a deck that could run the Dark Depths combo. Uh, yeah, that that is that is true. Yeah, all all parts of that Buffalo are available to Steven. <laughs> Correct. And he can wait on Urborg for later to ensure that he could cast a Hex Mage on two, quote unquote reliably. Very cool. Yeah, Spirit I mean, of the Lab. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, kind of. Yeah, so, so Jester, Jester's kind of like doing spirits. I guess, no, that is a spirit too. I was going to say, also kind yep. of going into hate bears, but uh, no. 4K, like no less does. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a rule of law on a 1 3? Uh, can't draw more than one. Draw? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is another one that's rule of law, and I'm forgetting which one that is. This is okay. Yeah, this is a 2 mana 3 1 spirit that also uh, has, turns off their draws. Yeah, so it, it leans into Narset, which he has. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, and I wonder if we will see the Rule of Law Spirit to pair with Teferi and just kind of create, because there's no Thalia in this, let's just create this little, like, taxing shell. Is the, I think, is the Rule of Law, is there a Spirit for it? There's also, there's the, uh, uh, there's the classic one that was one in a white that was non-artifacts. I'm forgetting the name of it now, but it's maybe from Mirrodin or, uh, no, maybe it's Shards of Alara. Ooh, Memory Lapse. That's a good one. Yeah. Delay was uh, taken, so memory lapse is another good follow up. Yep, I love memory lapse. Okay, there's no card that starts with spirit of that yeah. is rule of law, but I thought there was a rule of law card from Theros. Um, I gotta pick. Yeah, the one I the one I was thinking of. Um, let's see. Let's also look at hate bear themes from EDH because that, that's probably gonna be the best easiest way of finding this. Oh um, yeah, so Stephen with fact or fiction. I don't know if that seems late or not, or or what. I don't think so. A factor fiction is, is one that there's just so many replacements for it, despite that it's obviously very good. Uh, but no, in 24, it's a little late, I guess. But it's okay. not It's not even taken. It's roughly half the time. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be a deck in this draft that would really want to take advantage of fa factor fiction any earlier than it was picked right here. Yeah, Eidolon of Rhetoric. It was not a spirit. It's an Eidolon. Okay. Thank you. It is a spirit. It's a 1-4, and uh, it costs 3, 2, and a white. Each player can't cast more than one spell a turn. Okay. Okay, so I realized the card that I was thinking of um, for turning off abilities. Uh, Hushbringer is the card that I would have I would expected oh, to see yeah. uh, instead of Strict Proctor. Okay. But sp Strict Proctor is a spirit. Is Hushbringer a human? It is not, yeah. Human? No, so that, that, okay. that's, why, that's why they went this way. I mean, it, yeah. it obviously isn't as strong, but it is... Uh, it is a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Winder, to your point, I just forgot what set it was even from. I, I, I keep thinking <laughs> the only Eidolon I remember is Great Revel because it's the most relevant one to my play experience. Yep. And uh, to Halen's point, yes, EOT, F O F Y L. Like, with we see memory lapse, we see factor fiction. We are just short the Flame Tongue Kabu and the Psychotog and Upheaval. Otherwise, we're good to go. Grief is a card that we talked about, and people were people were trying to put it in those top three of best discard cards of all time. I was never really in that boat because Unmasked already exists, and it wasn't doing this. Uh, that is the exact card I was going to cite. Yep, but yeah, Kira Kira is obviously incredible in spirits. Goblin Rabble Goblin Rabble Master. I bet Sam is probably sad to be missing out on. Uh, they really are kind of eating each other's lunch right now. Yeah, Rabble Master is interesting because it mm, you don't have a critical mass of goblins yet. But you don't need it, right? It just it wins the game by itself. You have you give it three turns and you win the game. But that's the thing. It takes turns. Yeah, but it's a must answer. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of this card. I don't disagree. I wonder if Legion of War Boss is better. I, I think, yeah, both of those are... I don't know which one's better, but they're both very strong. I would bet they're both on her list. And Levine with the reshape pick. Yeah. I wonder if that's just the callback. <laughs> Living up to his reputation. Yeah. Lover, lover of reshape. Uh, Natural State is another good one after Nature's Claim is gone. Yeah. Noxious Revival. Wow. What does she need to get back? Maybe like, Monomorphos? But it goes back to the top of the deck? For the redraw. Well, yeah. Monomorph... Oh. Uh, Monomorphos does redraw. Is that the... So Veil of Summer, Monomorphos, Faithless Looting, those are your draw spells. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's going to be more uh, more things that discard or mill that are coming? Yeah. Uh, it could speak to the the question that we had originally, which is why the faithless looting. Yeah, exactly. I'm still I'm still unclear on that. 
Yeah, but I get Noxious Revival because you're trying to spend like as little mana as possible, right? So it is obviously the better uh, revive. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't even want to look at regrowth, Eternal Witness, Den Protector. You want to look at like revive. That's fair. So this Lutri, Lutri, Lutri uh, has been crashing down the radians. You can see that it's picked in 15 out of 14 drafts. Uh, yep. That is actually true because we drafted it. The it, it was spoiled and that entire set was spoiled, so we allowed for it to be picked in a draft where it wasn't legal and vintage yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why it's one extra. But oh, it, is, right. it started off as like a third round pick and it's just been crashing all the way down here too. I think this is about where it actually should be because it, yeah. it's fine. It just doesn't it doesn't have the same kind of impact on the game, even though it exists in every game because it's just a fork with a body right it is and it's fine you... right but it costs six mana to fork something because you have to put it in your it hand and then you have to cast it again oh oh okay see i always think of this card as one of the 40 oh, not the yeah. 41st yeah, yeah no, i keep you run it as your companion every single time because you can uh -huh. but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's just like a pretty low impact card yep no that that absolutely makes sense when you play it as your companion every time i see this it's like because i remember the decision they like you said, this card was leaked so early compared to the rest of the set because the RC had to come out and say, ban in Commander, flat out. And I just think of it as a fork. I never think of it as a card that exists as a companion because it was banned immediately. Totally. Yeah, it's like a recurs recursion fork, essentially. Yeah. Dragon Master Outcast is looking to play, ensuring that we can play a long game. Yep. Um, we're eventually we're, Steve, er, Eric now has like four cards that tutor and put an artifact into play. He, yeah. is, he is hard into this time vault. Yeah. I think, is it Inspiring Statuary that gives all your artifacts improvise? I thought we might see that out of Eric as well, but that costs too much. It costs like four. It costs three. So, three? Yeah. That I mean, I've not ever really thought about this card, but it does seem like it. It does seem useful. I don't know. I mean,. Yeah. I don't know how many. I would like to see it with a token producer, something like an, um, uh, like a, the Thopter Foundry would actually be really yep. strong with us. Yep. Yes. Uh, but it, it's sure. yeah. Like, uh, so it gives Inspiring Statuary something to do, right? So Inspiring Statuary turns it into a, 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 you know, an artifact land essentially, and it does allow you to toggle your mono artifacts. Right? Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can improvise with them. Yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to think because I can never remember mono versus poly. Which ones? <laughs> yeah, uh, mon mono are ones that tap. Poly are ones that don't need to tap. Okay. Because mono you can use once, and poly you can use many times. Yep. Uh, uh, so cyclonic rift is, is another one. This is one that I like to go on little rants about. Uh, yep. It, you never get to actually use the big ability, so I prefer something like echoing truth just to deal with tokens. But mm -hmm. I mean. Th these cards are all fine, right? After Brazen Borrower's gone, Cyclonic Rift is probably third best after Brazen Borrower and uh, and the chain. Yep. Robber of the Rich gets taken. Steven loves to talk about how good this card is, and then it gets taken like a third of the time. Nope, yep. not even. <laughs> like one tenth of the time. Yeah. Uh, so, it Wandering Winder, you, you mentioned Life of the Ro Loan from Sam. That is something we mentioned very early on after we saw the, the Faithless Looting. Was if you're going to be if you're going to be looting and you're going to have fast bomb, does it make sense to also play life from the low? And we've been kind of waiting for that pick from Sam from round eight. Mm -hmm. I, I like Rob of the Rich. It looks like it should do so much, and I think I want to stress the word or words <laughs> looks like. Yeah, I do think it it does. It is a fine card, but you, it, there's very few decks that actually want it. We do happen to have two decks at the table right now that probably want it. Because Robert yeah. the Rich would be very strong. Um, again, getting cast for one less and just getting yep. cast in turn two and beating down. Yeah, absolutely. I, I kind of wonder, looking at Curry's list, if there was this idea of actually playing Shortcake. And now we're kind of taking a left-hand turn away from it because Levine's picked up the Grindstone. And... Uh, so, we're... Winder, to get into Alpha Theory... Uh, a card like Mox Emerald is a mono artifact because you have to tap it to use it. Continuous artifacts are cards like Howling Mine that have an effect without as long as they're untapped. And Poly artifacts are cards that don't have the tap symbol but do have an activated ability. Uh, something, I'm trying to think of any of them right now, but basically anything that has like a pay two mana, do a thing. Uh, like the, the charms. Ashnod's Altar. Ashnod's Altar is one. Uh, the original charms, like the Throne of Bone would be another one. 
those would be poly artifacts. But yeah, I could easily be wrong about any of this. I'm not gonna pretend to be Steve Menendi in here. Yeah, all you have to remember is that when you toggle your static and winter orbs, you can untap your own stuff. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's really it. Captain is, is a great uh, one. And Howling Mind. Howling Mind's the other one that you can toggle. So that's the the Spirit Lord from. It's the Hexproof Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And I need to remember how to spell it now. Drug Skull, maybe with an O. Yes. Yes. D R O G S K L. There we go. Yeah, so never been drafted, but is very strong. Yep. Yeah, Steven has Winter Orb, um, but we were more. I was more thinking about Levine uh -huh. taking Inspiring Statuary and giving his artifacts the ability to toggle for mana. Um, inspiring Statuary doesn't really fit into Steven's plan. Okay, sorry, Ninth Seed was having some issues there, but uh, like we're back now. Carpet of Flowers is a great pickup. I really like that one. It plays against almost every other deck. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sigma Stitcher is interesting. I don't even know what that yep. is. Neither do I. I've heard the name. Wait. No, it's not the one I'm thinking of. Poppet Stitcher. Oh, this this must be a flip card. Yes, Poppet Stitcher and Poppet Factory. Okay, it's the one that makes pumps out tokens and then turns them all into three threes. Oh, okay. So yeah, pumps out a bunch of decayed zombies that are terrible on their own, but then when it flips over when you have three of them, they all become they, it gives humility to all tokens you control and makes them 3-3s. Three okay. So this looks like how Steven's going to close out the game. Uh, Seems like a good one. And then Chandra yeah. Accolade. Oh, we got the Supreme Phantom that you called about earlier. The Sig River Cutthroat's actually really interesting to me. you got to deal 3 damage. If it's only a 1-3, it doesn't power itself. I oh, like yeah. that card when paired with Lightning Bolt and a little more of a passive way to deal damage to your opponent. But it does refill. Yeah, I think if, if you have other creatures that you're beating down with as well, so like, I guess, when when we anticipate things like Bloodgast attacking alongside her, she's very good. Yep. But her, him, I, just I don't know what Sig is. Sig is Whatever a fish, it is. Fish little, fish little guy. Yep. I, I just don't know how well it will play out in the draft as, as we've seen, because almost everybody has a creature suite. And the removal suite here that we're seeing is based almost entirely on discard and a little bit of stack control with negate. True. Stuff That's like true. that. I just I just don't know how often we're gonna be able to punch through for damage. There's no The nice thing is that even if you source to plowshares or uh, solitude, you still can cause them you still can cause them to lose more life so like let's mm -hmm. say they gain five and then lose three it still triggers sig so that's nice yeah least. absolutely absolutely settle the wreckage that's i mean there's a lot of control or a lot of uh aggro decks coming out of this field right now yes vexing shusher which is kind of like got a roll response but not quite yep it's repeatable though oh absolutely it's a card i did not think of when i asked about got a roll response mm -hmm. Firelit Thicket, of course. Yep, another filter land, which is great. I wonder if we'll see any filter lands coming out of... Um... Out of the new set? No, 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 the uh, commons deck. Oh, interesting. We Mystic Gate's already taken, but the blue-black one is still around, and so is the black-white one. But the black-white one's... Pro like, black-white anything is, like, the least powerful option unless you're literally playing Orzhov. Right. Yeah, Fetid Heath, and I also expect to see the um, Caves of Coilos, of course. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, there's Fabricate. Wow, yep. Eric is super deep on this. Uh, I... Another draft where Eric just stays in his lane and nobody wants to really I just pull anything from him. I mean, I think Levine's deck is set up to win on turn four or five every single time, but he mm -hmm. doesn't really have any answers to anything. <laughs> like, he has a couple yeah. like defensive counter spells, but nothing that's going to stop, like, Sam from just running him over. No, not at all. And there's, uh, who has and who has I the has bridge? bridge. He, he has the bridge. He has the bridge. I, I'm assuming that's going to be in the sideboard for Karn, which means that he like needs to rush out of Karn and try then minus and then get a yep. bridge in the next turn. Yeah, there's the chill. Nice. Okay. Yep. So warmth. We'll see if Jester or Common takes it. Yep. Nihiri the Harbinger. So this is the red white Nihiri, the one that ultimates to sneak attack. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, 
I think warmth and chill are actually less good in this draft than they would be if they were if if she were pure red, because mm-hmm. they're you're not going to want to bring them in against these like three color decks that have a couple red cards, and her deck has enough green in it that it's not as punishing. Exactly. If you play chill on two and Sam untaps and plays reclamation sage, that feels so bad. So we're looking at Jaster, who has the the ability to continue on with this creature suite. I think Jaster set up pretty well to just maybe just creature out until the end. Just keep shaping the list. I, Only I, called. I don't actually have a list up tracking the number of like main deck cards, but I think Jaster might need to pivot back into more sideboard cards. But I I don't know just based on the few number of lands that he's taken. Okay, um, I I was thinking there might be an equipment pickup. We're st- we've ooh. still only seen. Mausoleum Wanderer. Okay, uh, is that the the four spike? That's the four spike one, I believe. Yep. Or it's it's four spike for the number of for its power or something. Okay. Okay, I cannot spell Mausoleum Wanderer, so we're gonna give okay. a shot. I think there's opportunity for a piece of equipment or two in this list. I think I I might really enjoy Sword of Fire and Ice for the draw aspect. That would be strong, yeah. I mean, also sort of uh, sort of green and blue. Is, is ridiculous. In body of Mind, yeah. yeah. Body of Mind is I, a 40-card deck. Yeah, I feel like Body of Mind in drafts like this kind of has the same social construct that Armageddon and EDH does. No way. This format's about winning. Uh, you can, if, if I think the only reason people don't play it is because it's so easy to disrupt, right? If they just like bounce it in response to the equip, you just get so far behind. But yeah, yeah, no, yeah. The, pe- people would... I don't think there are social constructs in this format. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Like, I, I think people, it, it's actually kind of beautiful, right? Like, you would think that, oh, yeah, people don't draft red because it's not fun, kind of like what happens in cube. And that just yep. isn't true here. People, like, people try it, and then they struggle because there's so many good hate cards for it. Because everything's, yeah. because you have full visibility to everything and everything's available, a lot mm-hmm. of the cards that seem not fun, like Armageddon or whatever, just yep. there are so many answers to them that it yep. makes it, it makes it so it's hard to really do a griefing strategy. Oh my Understood. god, Steven did it. Yep, here he comes. Snow-covered forest, to get to pick. Okay, we didn't miss Stasis, right? No, not yet. I don't, I don't think he is. His, no one else is going to take it. No, I just wanted to make sure, because we talked about this earlier on. I don't know how many snow-covered basics he plans to pick up. I would guess forest and island. Okay. Griefing tar pit. That's probably the best option over Shambling Vent with Celestial Colonnade gone. Probably. I'm trying to... Is the Filter Land's already gone. Is that right? Um, Mystic Cave is, yes, but not the blue-black one. Okay. So, yeah, I, I probably would have done the other one, but maybe he... He has kind of a creature deck, and with Sig, Creeping Tar Pit's a great way of getting through. Yeah, I... I'm going to continue to talk about it until it happens, but I think the equipment package yeah. is just looming over this draft, and... Oh, there's Time Spiral, finally. Yep. I think the moment somebody decides to pick up a sword, I, th- I think the rest of them just go that round. But I think it's just this delicate dance of, well, nobody's taken one yet, so I'll start prioritizing other picks over it. Yeah, and there, there's so many swords at this point that there's, like, Fire and Ice is probably the best one, uh, but there's enough other ones that you don't need to necessarily uh, worry if one gets sniped from you. Exactly. Mox Monkey is, is one that we don't often see, but it is a nice little callback. I think it's really... I don't know. If it, its value is always outstanding. I, it's a a great sideboard card, and I wonder if it's mainly just targeted for Levine. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just, like, you play it, and then you sit there and always leave up three mana, right? Yeah, because right now Steven's showing a really slow plan, but he's mm-hmm. also showing a lot of artifacts, and you could probably get uh, under it or over it if you're Curry. Yeah, I don't... This is why I, I think... Gorilla Shaman, despite used to be an all-star in Vintage, doesn't really do much here. You don't have the yep. density of, of artifacts in every single deck. So yeah. it's a sideboard card, and it comes in against like one or two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's sad to say that it doesn't do enough, but then you also look at the fact that we have By Force as a card and in this draft several rounds above it. Exactly. Yep. Darksteel Citadel, okay. So Levine getting... Mm-hmm. Is that... He doesn't have the Tinker, right? Somebody else has the Tinker? No, no, Levine has Tinker. Okay, so yeah. No, no, you're right. STI has Tinker. STI has Tinker. But Levine has both Reshape and Transmute. Yep, that makes sense. And yeah. 
Okay, Dryad, Dryad Armor is fine. Armoire. Maybe if Green Sun Zenith next. Are we going to see a Cradle out of this list? Oh, we, we should. You're absolutely right. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, Green Sun Zenith and Cradle are two really big ones. Yeah. Man, there's so many cards that she's taken that, like, I wonder if Brandon were not in this list. Things like a Clothis or, uh, like, Curse of Opulence. Like, these are cards that nobody else in the history of VRD would be talking about. And I yep. wonder if, because she had theory crafted with Brandon, because uh, mm -hmm. they live in the same house, uh, that that has forced her to push cards up in her list that she would otherwise not have to worry about and could take 45th. Yeah. I'm, I really like the build of this deck thus far. We've seen Model Red, or at least Model Red, start to be built. And then they, they pick up Chill, because nobody else does, kind of midway through the, the draft. And then you're just free to run Roughshod with Mono Red. Exactly. Kind of. <laughs> and I, this is so unique to see what is effectively an 8-whack deck just be built right in front of us. Yeah, it's, re it's really neat. And this has been, seriously, for the past six months, it's been theorycrafted. Like, every time I talk to Brandon, he always talks about this deck. Um, yeah. And it's, it's cool to see, her, to see her pull it off. Yeah. There's Mark, Force Mark of Vigor. Force of force Vigor is a good one. Yeah. I I still don't know how I feel about this suite of cards from Talent in Monastery Mentor, Young Peasy, and Sprite Dragon. All, like, Monastery Mentor is the most powerful one of the bunch if you have enough spells to really monetize it in a turn. Yep. I'm just very, still very worried yeah, Talon... that what you said is going to be correct and Talent is just going to get run over. I'm, I'm worried, yeah. Tal Talon's cards are all fantastic. I just don't know yeah. what they do together. Yeah, I mean... it's kind of It kind of feels like it's building a modern control deck. Yeah. Uh, but against this field where things are going pretty fast underneath you, I'm, I'm nervous. But I, I don't... I've been wrong before. I uh, If I was Talon and I'm looking at what's happening in front of me, I think my pocket pick is Moat. That's a good one, yeah. Because I have Sprite Dragon that can fly over, and I have Murktai Regent that can fly over. Mm -hmm. I have... Uh, Lutri doesn't fly. I might be able to pick up another good creature or two that flies, and then side it in. So I don't know. T Talon, I mean, Talon does have Settle the Wreckage, which I think is a really important pickup. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, Eric taking Damping Sphere. This is interesting. Uh, is this just against the Storm deck? Like that. I feel like sometimes when I'm when I'm drafting, I tend to draft cards more highly for decks that are close to me in proximity, like in the draft, yeah. because I'm just more focused on them. Uh, and I wonder if that's what's happening right here, because Damping Sphere doesn't seem very good against most of the field. Like, we don't have a lot of, uh, like, we don't have the soul lands other than the ones that mm -hmm. Eric, Eric has, right? <laughs> so he's kind of like, I don't know what, I don't know what he's trying to answer with this. I think it is here primarily for Sam, STI, because okay. STI is going to be able to untap and do a lot of crazy things. And maybe Curry, because Curry has the Academy, mm -hmm. or is Sam Academy? So Curry has Academy and Twister. No, no, sorry, that's not time. No, no, no. Twister, not time spiral. But okay, the opportunity, the opportunity to be casting a lot of spells in a single turn. I think I think Levine is doing exactly what you said, which is looking left and right and saying, "Okay, I need to do something here." But I think it also extends. There's Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune, as Helen points out in chat, is very late. Normally it's mm -hmm. around thirteen, and here it's already here it's going like in round thirty-seven. But there's nobody else that wants it though. True. Yeah. Uh, Cavern yep. of Souls is a cool one. Yep. We. I, hmm. That's the least I, inspiring art I've seen for Cavern of Souls. That's really sad. Oh yeah, absolutely. Look at the creeping tar pit from Battle for Zendikar box toppers. That is also uninspiring, but full art. Um, Cavern of Souls is interesting because you have two really good calls. You have spirits, which is kind of obvious, but you also have is elementals. Elementals, yeah, that's true. That gets so, subtlety and solitude and humility all the way through. Or subtlety, subtlety and solitude. Yep. Field of the Dead, nice. Steven's been talking about how that's uh, that's very important. Uh, yep. Wandering Wolf, if you go to stlotus.org, it's all the way at the bottom. Um, there's all the social links right there. You can just get to any of them. I guess I can also just do this. Yeah. Crop rotation. Uh, that, okay. Field of the Dead into crop rotation speaks a little bit. But I think it might smack of Dark Depths coming through. You. I think you're totally right. I don't know necessarily if he's going to go full into um, 
full into the, like the Vampire Hex Mage, or if it's just going to be stage and depths. Uh, yeah. Because we're kind of running low on picks at this point. They have about seven or eight picks left. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we just underground river, so we've started hitting the pain lands. Prohibit. Prohibit's a good one. That's just yep. a, it's another miscalc. No, wait, yeah. wait. Is prohibit prohibit is counter if it costs two or less. Yeah. My boy spell snare is still sitting out there. Yeah, and it still it still looks really really good. Yes. Like all the way down, I think talent just gets struck by spell snare. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know where what else Levine needs, unless he wants to pick up Leyline or Dothy Voidstalker to ensure the exile off of Grindstone. I don't think you need to, because in those matchups where you see an Eldrazi, you just go for the time ball combo in that case. Okay. Uh, like you, you don't you don't need to win off of that. Um, uh, if I'm if I'm Eric, I'm like, okay, I need to have a piece of graveyard hate out of my Karn board, yeah. uh, and then just like looking around, what else do I need to stay alive against these against these aggro decks? So figuring out uh, like maybe like the abyss is probably not good enough for him. It's probably yep. like, too slow. Uh, but figuring out cards like that that can answer these early ones. Uh, yeah, I'm just we we, actually, we follow we follow all of the um, we follow the vintage ban list. So Luris is legal, and because we follow the vintage ban list, it is it, Luris was unbanned in the past six months or so. I honestly forgot Levine has JTMS. So when I was thinking about how does he win the game outside of an Aldrazi, mm -hmm. and you call out time ball, JTMS is the way to do it. That makes sense. Yep. So I I. As we go down the list, I just had it set up so it was above the fold. Well, I mean, you can also just like I don't know, cast a painter servant and attack twenty times, <laughs> or like a trinket mage or oh. something. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You you can get there. You can nickel and dime someone out. You can mirage. That was just kind of how thing. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of how JTMS works. Mm -hmm. Totally. The the moral the moral victory. Yeah, some interesting things about the vintage ban list uh, that we since we follow that because it's a vintage rotisserie draft, uh, we do end up with things like crusade being banned. And I don't think Crusade is generally good, but it, like in a Death and Taxes deck, it might actually be legitimately good. Um, so it's it's sad that we lose some of those cards. So Empyrean Eagle is one we've never seen before, but three mana pump all your creatures seems okay. Yeah, this is like a uh, an EDH pick. Yeah. Yep. I got. I've usually seen it there. We got a Blood Moon. Okay. Yep. Ooh. Interesting. All right, I'll be right back. Yep. So let's see. Looking at decks, that Steven's deck basically looks like it's already done. Uh, he probably he's going to pick up lots more cards, probably more lands and things like that. Uh, Stasis we anticipate is going to come out of him. Common's deck also is uh, is pretty on track. Uh, I still hope to see Mesmeric Fiend and uh, see the uh, blood or Brain Maggot come out of that deck, um, mostly because they're pet cards of mine. But it seems like it's kind of small creatures beat down skull clamp hand disruption that that shells all together i think mind twist could easily go into common deck that hasn't yet shown up jester is just taking all the spirits i worry the jester is going to be overpicking uh for non-sideboard cards right now and that he needs cody needs to grab some sideboard cards or uh or at least get more lands or something because i think he might be over getting close to having 40 cards already main deckable uh Brandon, I genuinely still don't know what's happening. It seems like an aggressive deck that happens to run wheels. Um, so maybe the plan is just to like dump out his hand and then wheel. Uh, but I, I don't I don't see kind of the like clear direction. So I'm still waiting to see what actually what, what Brandon builds, but I've never seen Brandon build a bad deck even when Brandon drafts bad cards. And he hasn't done either of those things this time. So lots of lots of uh, interesting things to see from the champ. But uh, then STI seems really on track for this oath deck. Uh, it has kind of a combination of Oath and Show and Tell, um, which is great. But then there's also this High Tide package. So it's, it's it's really interesting to see what comes out of it. I don't know if, if High Tide is like out of the board with Cunning Wish or if uh, if Cunning what Cunning Wish is there for. Uh, but there's Misdirection is a really nice, great pickup recently. I feel like Misdirection is a card that is pretty severely underdrafted. And uh, it's nice to uh, it's nice to see it get the respect it deserves in this one. And it, if you, it's pretty late by comparison to where it used to be. Juar Disruption is one of my favorites recently. This card Better is... Uh, I love Juar Disruption. 
Yeah, better force spike. Yes. It's just, it's so powerful. How often do we see uh, MDFCs? Uh, we see this one as probably the most common. Uh, and I think. Not Valakut Awakening. We right? don't see Valakut Awakening almost ever. We sometimes see the black one, uh, the uh, the one that kills, like Hagra Mauling or whatever. Yep. Um, and I think we might have seen the uh, Egadim's Awakening as well a couple times. Okay. Nimbus Maze is a good one. That's that's a cycle I really hope they complete someday. So Tabernacle from Sam, I like. I like it against Sam. I'm confused by it. <laughs> Is That's it... kind of why I like it. Okay. You think it's just to stop Steven from taking it with crop rotation? Uh, there's there's that option. Or I think Levine could also yep. stand to take Tabernacle because if your Trinket Mage dies, you don't really care. It's done its job. And you can win with the the trigger on the stack with Painter Servant. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it's a pick there. This is, this is a really fun instance of kind of actually taking the hate card, right? Of like taking yeah. your own hate card. Exactly. It, it, Sam can side into a longer game deck, something bigger with Dragon Master Outcast and play a longer game, and Tabernacle kind of works out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not entirely certain if Sam is able to in game two really stand up against Common. When, or not Common, I'm sorry, uh, Jaster. Mm, sure, when you yeah. look at this, Because you're playing a lot of these one, two, and three mana creatures, and if Sam deems that in the matchup they are not the beat down then they have to play a longer game and i think tabernacle helps speak to that yeah so winder is a great question which is this unleash fury what are we doubling mm -hmm. i would assume it's that seven mana giant pirate guy that you were talking about yes uh oh. so there's there's that uh what is there there's morag morag questing yep. beast uh clothis if it already goes Clothis. Online. yep uh do you, Dargo. Do you anticipate seeing um, what is the one that gives double strike? It's a one mana I give a creature double strike as a sorcery. Oh, I was just thinking of Team or Battle Rage. Um, oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. I, I no, I don't remember that one. I, it's I think it's because I never really played it in the Little Ground Red decks. I'm used to just like pumping plus two plus one and trample. Um, but yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Assault. Assault strobe. That's strobe. right. Yeah. But yeah, I think T-Rub, Battle Rage, Assault Strobe could both easily make it. Obviously, this one's not an instant, so it's not nearly as good, but you sometimes can see this in uh, in Poison decks. Yes, yeah. Aether I played that. That's the one I was thinking of. Uh, it's Aether Sworn. Yep. There we go. Aethers. Yeah, so that, that's a really fun one. And uh, Steven did take the Leovold. Yes, Okay. Chandra Torch, back to basics. Oh man, mm. STI, that's a great pick. I love seeing back to basics get taken. It's really nice, especially like STI's deck doesn't really suffer from being under back to basics. You have Shell Dock. It's a high time deck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's Opposition Agent up. finally. Hey, we made it. Yeah, STI has like four lands that get, t that get locked down. Mm hmm. Uh, Steven misspelled Leovold as Ludwig, apparently. <laughs> a card, but not the one he's looking for. No. There's there's the Kataki. Yeah, that's that's going great. Shacklegeist, of course, is really strong. I absolutely has never been played before, but No. I I thought him I think Empyrean Eagle into Shacklegeist might speak to the fact that we're running out of spirits that are good <laughs> enough to play. I think that might be true. There is that one. I mean, no, we got the Lord. Yeah, we kind of hit all of them already. At least all of like, the ones in the modern deck. Yeah. Patrician oh Geist. Oh my god. Now we're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Yeah. Oh, this is the Lord. Yeah, this is Spells the new Lord. Yeah. yeah, spells you cast from your graveyard, which I don't, I do not think we're doing. Malevolent Hermit is the only one I can see right now. Yeah, but there's like this knowledge pool package that doesn't really have any tutors for it, but I guess just wins if you happen to get it to go. Uh, but yeah, you're not really like, maybe you're hoping to like exile good cards off your opponent and steal them from them. Maybe. Like it might actually just be the knowledge pool is good because your opponents get like two mana two twos and you get whatever cards they have. I I like. It makes sense, but 
I don't honestly know if it makes less or more sense than picking a puzzle box right now. I I have a question for uh, the bot. Mm -hmm. How often is Yogmoth well picked? Not often enough, sadly. It's just okay. like not as uh, not as relevant as it used to be. So fifty out of sixty. Yep. But storm. I think people have realized storm is mostly a trap. I'm gonna agree with that. I'm just the like, reading Patrician guys. It's cute, but I'm thinking about STI. If you just want to start on tap and stuff and like double high tide. Yeah. No, it's true. You're not in. You're not in black, but will is something you could be doing. Yeah, STI isn't. What is the second color there? Is it just? No, there's green. Green for oath, of course. Okay. But only off of a breeding pool. Yeah, H and... Alan points out breach is obviously much better. Yes. The the, the time where we've seen storm go off. Wait, and is they have brain freeze and LED. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're okay. That's it. Are we okay? Is did we just miss the fact this is going to have breach and Thassa's oracle? I can't imagine that's all on the main deck, though, because you don't want an Oath deck with your Thassa's Oracle. Oh, wait, no. Oracle. Curry has LED. Curry? Has, okay, okay. Okay, never mind. So we can't just play that game. And who has the... Uh, is, Sam has the Lotus? Who has the Lotus? Is that, is that Levine. Levine? Okay. That's Levine. Okay, so we actually can't pick... Because nobody has the ability to play a Thassa's Oracle package, but we could... Breach for value. Submerge. Submerge is a great pickup there because that, mm -hmm. that kind of does exactly what we were uh, asking, right? Is finding an answer. Yep. And it triggers everything else you're doing. Yes. Yeah, I really like that submerge pick. So that's going to be good against Sam, and that's going to be good against Hagen. Otherwise, you're just paying five. Right, and, and you probably won't ever do that, but it's, it's really important in the matches where you need it. Yeah. Halen, yes, Lotus Petal has been taken. Uh, it was taken by Curry in round 18. Mm -hmm. I'll link the sheet again here. Who also that's... has LED. Allosaur Shepard is a great one. Uh, this okay. Is, this is another, uh, another all-star. Uh, it generally gets taken above the enchantment version of itself. Um, but, yeah, the... The Destiny Spinner or the also or Shepherd are both very commonly taken, as well as there's the okay. Elf one that doesn't. It's just a two mana one one. That's like it's creature it says creature spells can't be countered, I believe. Or yeah, I'm. I wonder if uh, man, we don't. Eric with yeah, the Wormquill engine probably out of the Karn board. Um. Eh, yeah. Good with transmute. Um. True. So we don't have enough elves to actually make the activated ability on Alice or Shepard. I mean, it makes itself be a 5-5. Five five. That's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. I don't think it's... That's We're not, not doing the primary that. plan. Yeah. Okay. Bone Crusher Giant. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so we have Bone Crusher Giant and we have Brazen Borrower as the only adventure spells right now. Uh, is that true? I, those are the only two that are coming to mind, yeah. Yeah, the, because the pump one, the plus three plus one is a little narrow. Correct, yeah. You'd have to, maybe Sam could run that one, but it's Ex not as good. We are off of the 8-whack plan, I believe. But yeah. if we were on the 8-whack plan, then I do believe that would be perfect for this, mm -hmm. for that list. I mean, obviously the mill deck runs the uh, the mill card, but the one mana mill five. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I like Curry's turn into red. It does seem pretty open. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it pushes him directly in front of Sam, and that's, that's I think, like probably a good thing, because she was yeah. kind of getting whatever she wanted. Oh, yeah, she was going to run away uh, run away with red. Mm -hmm. But there's also... I, I don't, it's not like there was any kind of trepidation for anybody else to move into red, because Sam was just picking these really low-to-the-ground aggressive creatures mixing in a little bit of green but it's not like somebody else couldn't have been moving in on more goblins because sam wasn't signaling something like that right that's true abolish is a great one this is one that eric i mean it's been taken more than just that right but eric uh brought this into saint lotus uh when he played last time and just 
stomped with it. Yep. All these free cards are just, like, it has impressed me so much and made me realize how how I'm valuing t expensive counter spells too much whenever I see cards like this that people just run underneath you when you're trying to set up your uh, when you're trying to set up your cryptic or what well, all the other four mana counter spells. Yeah. So is abolish uh, from the masks era pitch spells or is it, it is. a reprint? Yeah, okay. yeah. No, it's it's one of the original ones. So that's probably been trying to pick his own forests. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Picking basic lands. Yeah, but prophecy. My my knowledge of those cards is is narrowed to the ones that are played at Legacy and Vintage. Obviously, Same. we won't see Invigorate here because in fact it's probably extremely difficult to nigh impossible. Yep. Uh, there's a Seeds of Innocence is a card that I recently saw some play here, and it made me think. Okay, I absolutely need to buy this because it's on the reserve list. So yep. this might be a Cabal cast uh, conversation more so. But uh, yeah, yeah, this this card feels like it's a sleeper to me. It's very cheap. Yeah. Uh, does stuff out get played that often in BRDs? It does not not always, but it definitely is a card that you should have on your radar. Uh, so yeah, roughly a quarter of the time. Okay. Stifle is a great pickup there. Uh, yeah. Is that going with anything in particular? He's not going to go Stifle mod or anything, right? That's just a value card. I think it's just a value card. Mm -hmm. I really hope that Cemetery Prowler is good because that card is really interesting. Yes, I am very. In I, I'm hoping it does. Oh, there's another one, Empress Shieldbreaker. Is that the pump one? I that think is, it's the pump one. Yeah, that is. Did Curry really just move in on Red Aggro? I mean, he he's been in Red Aggro for a while, but yeah, he finally actually pulled the trigger. But, and pushed yeah, that's what I mean. Him. At 31, is that it? Is this the turn that we saw from, like, what are you doing with Memory Jar and all this other hoo-ha? Yeah. Nope. Do you think Artifact he's going to ditch removal. the wheels entirely? Or is he going to keep some of them in? I imagine... Your plan is so strong with that, but it's... There are some diluted picks, and I think it starts with Balance and goes down to Memory Jar. So 16 through 22, where we were just kind of unfocused. Yeah. Yep. Save for, like, Lightning Bolt. That's great. But I think he got pushed out of blue is what happened, right? Because, like, yeah. he was in that Hull Breacher seat, and, uh, yeah, it really seems like kind of those initial picks into blue and then fighting over blue lands. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be left with, like, Time Twister, Hull Breacher, Talarian Academy, Deck yeah. Maiden, and that's it. Emery, yeah. maybe? I don't know. Emery I, might not even make it anymore. I don't think it's good enough. To, oh, no. Mystical, I think, you, you pull as well. Yeah. Giga Drows. See, Giga Drows is one that obviously works great Whoa. in STI, but I think it would have also been good in Levine's deck. Okay. Chalice of the Void from Levine. Mm -hmm. Giga Drows usually run 44, and if it's been picked 10, 10 times, that means that it's basically always been in 43 through 45. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, Halen, we, we talked about uh, Kari picking up underworld breach for value but not the the value combo the, th the oracle That's combo based yeah. yeah based on what they were doing because of this move into red where it just seems kind of unrealistic to be able to play all of this together Ooh, i like this verdict pick that's a really good one and mm -hmm. royal is also a good way to stay under uh, uh Bolas is war of the spark domri yeah yeah it gives plus one plus out everything I was wondering if we would see Supreme Verdict out of uh, Talent at any point, or uh, possibly Jaster when Jaster was on the more control plan. Yeah. Now, now that Spirits, obviously, you don't necessarily want to be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Once we actually moved in on the aggro side of things, that was kind of out of the question. But, you know, when we were in, like, rounds, let's say, like, 15... Like, yeah, he was picking control. Uh, Model League, it's a Spell Queller, Veto, Ops, Chain. Like, that kind of stuff. Subtlety, even. Mm -hmm. I thought okay. maybe we would still be on... Ooh, Ember Wild Captain. I do not know this card. Uh, it is not Gromgol, which is the one I'm thinking. Oh, about. this is this is the Monarch one. Mm. Deals yep. to him. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. That's very good. You know, yes. Nine Seed is actually suggesting something that might get drafted still, which is Embercleave. That feels like that could be very strong for Brandon. Yes, I think it'd also be really good for Sam too. I think both of those decks benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Like Rabble Master into Embercleave could be very good. Absolutely. I like the defense grid pickup. It's a good one. Yep. Either for Karn or main deck. Yes. Um, I like Ember Wild Captain is another way to give you the Monarch as well on top of the Court of Bounty. Yeah. 
That's true. If I if I remember correctly, the red court is uh, really bad. Okay. Um, court of ire it costs five. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals two damage to any target. If you're the monarch, it deals seven to that player or permanent instead. Okay, that's not too bad, but it costs five. I don't think Sam's gonna be no really looking for that. I, I still think know. Legion War Boss is a sleeper in both of those lists. I agree with you. I think that card is very good. And I think that I think it should get drafted. We'll see. But uh, Sam's also... Uh, I worry that she is over leaning into the main deck cards as well. I think that she might need to be taking more silver bullets as opposed to these kind of generically good cards. Yeah, she's kind of sprinkled some in, but I, I agree. I don't think there are enough. There's things like Alasaurus Shep Shepherd and so on that she has a destiny spinner but yeah in general it's like these things are not uh oh i don't think eric needs another key no um i think that if you have if you're resolving a karn and you already have a time vault in play you're probably going to win that game already <laughs> yep i agree uh yeah so these de these decks are pretty done at this point I, I think brandon's is the one that had probably probably the most splashing around but it, he ended up in a good spot and he found his lane yeah, absolutely. And I think there's still room to improve that deck. I, I, we, I don't think we've hit the ceiling, and I think it could be very high for his list. I, I also don't think Steven's done throwing down. I, I think his last four picks can be very impactful. We still haven't seen Dark Doves go. Right. I think Dark Doves, Thespian Stage, and whatever the bird is, that the green-blue bird that has snow-covered lands, that one's going to get picked, probably. Mm -hmm. There's Snap. Snap is a good one, yep. Another free spell. There's no way Rewind is good enough for BRD. No, sadly not. Yeah. I don't like, like we can double check. I'm sure it's been taken because it's like one of those old cards that's been around forever. But yeah, it's not very often. Yeah, it, it basically only plays into like the high tide plan. Right. Yeah, or, or like really late game control decks, like big mana yeah. kind of, big blue. Yep. What, what is that? Alan Crump? Yeah, oh, Pal Palancrine definitely sees play. I don't think okay. it's not, I don't think it's needed for this one. No, 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 not at mana all. Doublers, but uh, aside from High Tide, like true. Yeah, but yeah, there's no Vernal Bloom. There's no Mono Flare, Mono yeah. Reflection, nothing. Yeah, it's kind of like in order to get High Tide to go off because you need 11 mana on top of the High Tide. Oh, I guess I guess no. You can just wait for it. Yeah, you need 11 mana to. to How work. about this one? It's an ETB trigger, Show and Tell. Oh, okay. I'm liking this plan a lot more now that you say that. Zealous Conscript. Is there going to be a Kiki? Oh. I think there's going to be Kiki Jiki next. Oh, that would be fantastic. If you had a way to throw all these at somebody, Splinter Twin also works. Right. Okay. So we have the Walking Ballista at 19. We have Zell's Conscripts. If we Kiki Jiki, we don't have any way to make infinite mana, correct? I don't think so. I mean, in infinite dudes with Zell's Conscripts, but I don't see a. I don't see infinite mana now. Yeah, I was just trying to think of the pieces that we had. Mm -hmm. Nebelgast Herald. Okay. Okay, I'm sure that's a magic card. Yeah. Oh, exactly. You mentioned scraping the bottom of the barrel before. I think we've reached. We're reaching through that one to the one underneath. <laughs> this one, this card did do things in standard. I remember that. Yeah. Isn't there? Is it Dungeon Geist? That's a spirit. That's a card that's I, probably better than this. It doesn't have flash. I believe but... so. But you can give them all flash. Yeah. Tap target creature and opponent controls. Yeah, and it, it ice it um frost breaths it or whatever that yeah. effect is called. Oh, Toxic Deluge and Ice Fang Quaddle. The Ice Fang Quaddle is the one I was talking about, but Toxic Deluge is a really late mm -hmm. pickup. Wow. Yep. Is, um, is Toxic... Yeah, I mean, it's only going to cost three. How much... Blood on the Snow, how much does that cost? It costs five or six. It's okay, a lot. so Deluge is... Yeah. But yeah, the, the Toxic Deluge normally goes 30. So yeah, I mean, is it, are the last two picks going to be uh, Dark Depths Thespian Stage? <laughs> Come on, Steven. Uh, he still hasn't picked Stasis, stasis. yet. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way, fine. yeah. There's no way in Steven's list to activate depths, right? Aside from the long game. Uh, right now. As it stands. No. Yeah. No. I mean, he, he would need Thespian Stage or Vampire Hexmage. Yeah. Okay. Has Dowdy Voidwalker gone undrafted? No one has. That I 
I believe that is correct. Nobody has that card. Oh man, he should be taking that. Do stasis and Douthy Voidwalker. <laughs> it means oh, that crop rotation is probably not worth it. Maybe for yeah. Field of Dead, but that that's his best target right now, I believe. Does he even have seven different lands? He picked two snow lands, right, and so he has five. Okay. Trop, Underground, Bayou, okay. right up at the top. Yeah, he's okay then. Yeah. Vault of Whispers, Overgrown Tomb, that's five. Six, seven in the snow lands. And they're all fetchable. Yes. Because of the work he did up top. Yep, 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 that's fair. This Castigate, I just think is fine. I don't know, I'd much rather have it be a Mesmeric Fiend. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep harping on this. I love that card. It it seems so good when you have two pieces of equipment and one of them is skull clamp. Right, and you could then you could have gone therapy too. Oh man. Yeah, I think I like Commons list. I just question the Sig River Cutthroat and the Blood Gast. Like again, he's doing so much work. I like Blood Gast his... a lot actually. I think Blood Gast plus uh, Clamp is incredible. Yeah, because you can keep drawing. Yeah, that's a good point. You can just keep clamping through it. You don't actually have to be attacking with it. But there's just so much work that... Or rather, they're leaning so much on their discard spells. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, I do think that there's a good chance, like, a Liliana would have been great in that list, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, I think Liliana's a big one to miss. Uh, and yeah, Helen, I talked about this at the beginning. I think that that's fine, right? I think you, you initially, like, clamp... You initially uh, fiend their hand to take their discard spell or take like their counter spell or something that doesn't really like their mana leak and then really late game you clamp your fiend and you give it back to them and all of a sudden sure they can mana leak your two mana spell when you have five mana in play and you don't care you, you yeah. kind of just like use it as a tempo play yep runaway steampian is really interesting because that says we want a combo yeah what is this and, and i don't see it I mean, I guess it is a two mana four four. Like that's still yeah. fine. Forbidden Orchard, of course, for the oath. That makes sense. Okay, so we actually are gonna stay on the oath plan in the main. Okay. Yeah. What is Cutting Wish doing then? I don't know. Misfall Bridge. This has got to be from uh, one of the new Innistrad sets. Is that the artifact land? The blue, the blue white artifact land? You are one hundred percent correct. It's yeah. the blue black one. I hate Misfall all those red. tap lands. <gasps> oh, Sam with the Zerin Orb. There it is. Wow. So Sam can go infinite now. Yep. Infinite life. And yeah, she, awesome. she also has the... Does she have infinite... Oh, yeah, that can go infinite damage, too. Yep, because she has the punishing fire. Yep. Council Judgment got taken way back. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that is forever ago. Now 24. Also, it's misspelled, because there's an E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, am, what are we missing from Perry's list? Runaway Steamkin. What are we Kiki missing? Jiki is the only thing I can think of. Runaway Steamkin is a wild one. I love this card. It was, I loved it in standard. Is it like Porphyros? Porphyros would be pretty strong. You have to cast a red spell to trigger it, right? right. So, so maybe a Burgie? Burgie gets you mana to like continue pumping stuff? Yeah, to just chain through. And then you Unless can it was suggested earlier that we see Breach in Kyrie's deck with LED. Yeah, that could do it. Soulfire Grandmaster is a great pickup with uh, Time Walk. So that, that makes it for infinite Time Walks there. Infinite Time Walks, yeah. It's like not going to happen very often, but it might as well put it in. Yeah, talent looking to play, it's got to be a long game with Soulfire Grandmaster. Once Upon a Time is a great pickup. That's very late. Yeah, that's usually around 18. Wow, okay. Brainstone. Ugh. From the mind of Eric Levine. Brings you brainstone. I guess this is you want to have a card on your card board that draws a card. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh, close like butcher of truth. So somebody is just protecting against mill. Uh no, I think that's that's for the uh, for the show and tell. Is it? Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Does it e is it ETB or is it cast on this one? Uh, it's it's on cast, so you don't okay. you don't get the cool stuff. You don't get it. I think yeah. Emrakul's already taken, and it's oh. Kozilek or Ulamog. Yes. I forgot we had omniscience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, with Omniscience. Yeah, it's even better. You're right. So you can actually refuel it. You can, mm -hmm. oh man, you have Omniscience, Cryptic Command, and Mystic Sanctuary. And that, Kozilek. That's good. You're right. That Maddening Hex is very strong. This this is a card that I think is going to be in every VRD going forward. At least, like, free yes. all our heads up and tracking it, because it just does so much damage. 
and you can't like having played against this card once i never want to again because you you're like okay i'm at six life i'm gonna yep. cast my spell and i might win the game or i might lose the game but there's just like it the amount of variance that happens if you're like at 12 life and you need to cast three spells to win you just have no idea if you're gonna win or lose like you can't make lines because every line is is a variant possibility yep. it's really hard it is it's harder to play around than Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Yes. And it seems like, on average, it's going to do more damage than Eidolon of the Great Rebel. 100% with you. Yeah. Smokestack. That... Holebreaker horror. <sighs> I don't know about these these last two picks. Holebreaker horror is obviously, like, fine. I don't think it's great, but it's fine. Smokestack is... is, is I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Is this, uh, is this Bitter Blossom plus Smokestack as the plan, I guess? I think so. That's got to be it. I can see no other... Or, oh, uh, Thopter Foundry. Thopter. Yeah. Okay. I, I we've, we've had some very big conversations about Hullbreaker Horror and its utility. I just... I, not being able to bounce lands is really tough. Hindering Light's I, a fun one. Yep. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Steven has enough instance to actually care about the return spell portion. So at that point, why wouldn't you just play Tide Spout? Uh, time, tide Spout, Tyrant. Yeah. I mean, the Uncounterable the is pretty strong too, but yeah, like you, you normally expect to see this in a deck with Opt and uh, Consider and all those other like filter cards. Yeah. We got Crop Rotation, Nature's Claim, Factor Fiction, Assassin's Trophy. We, we have some, but not many. He's, maybe it's... That, this would be hilarious if it was like show and tell tech. <laughs> That's <a> funny, actually. <laughs> but you, yeah, you need to do extra work, right? Because it's not—it's yep. not like a Venser. Venser is the traditional one there. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I didn't even think about Venser. Hyphen points out that it does cost one less as well. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, and we have—it's kind of odd, like. That's absolutely understandable, but we also have Urza and Nissa who shakes the world. Uh, do we really care about that one extra? Yeah, fair. This is a this is a new one. Are so, we both looking at Cemetery Illuminator? Yeah, I've not seen this card before. It's the blue one. Yep. Steven's and got the green one. Continuing the trend of random graveyard hate, just getting tacked onto good creatures. Yeah, yeah that's a spirit. Yeah. Sark on the master list. This must be a new one. It's gotta be the uh, is it the uncommon one from like War of the Spark? Yeah, it's it's well it's the rare one, but yes. There was a rare one? Yeah, it it, uh, it makes your planeswalkers become dragons. And no Halen, he did not take the Kiki Jiki. Nope. That's all his consequence must just be a show and tell tech. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it's what it's for. Oh wow. The respect of show and tell. I, I don't it doesn't seem great though, right? Because you steal their thing that they were gonna use to kill you and then you give it back to them next turn. <laughs> Yeah, but it, you know, you get to untap it, right? So, it it, it plays all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's never going to be terrible. Like it can also just like remove their blocker and kill them, right? It, it can exactly. Just be, it can just be a, um, wow, I'm blanking on what the old active freeze ones threaten. It can just be a threat. Yeah, it also untaps your own stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, as we know, because we talked about Kiki Chiki, so I'm curious. That's what I mean. Is like did we miss something else that's going on? There's the pithing needle mm -hmm. from STI. Let me just. We're not missing something on oh, like ste Layla. Stealing their planeswalker ultimate is really that—that that is the ultimate, right? When you can, you can wait for them to take their Jace all the way uh, up and then grab it. Yeah, I I too live in magical Christmas Christmas land sometimes. <laughs> Our Gibby and Restoration is a fun one. I, okay, I was wondering if Levine could play out of the graveyard. There it is. Yeah, yep. I would expect him to be the person that pulls this card. Galta. Yep, Galta is, is the was was the like when we were talking about this burning tree emissary. It's like Galta. Yep. Br Brandon's phrasing of it was, uh, "Brain freeze is the best storm card in VRD. Galta is the second best." <laughs> <laughs> That's I, so true. Oh, and there's sudden shock. Cap it off at the end. All right. Well, this was great. We got to yeah. we got to watch it. Um, we not actually going to be we're not going to be commentating all the matches because commentating matches on. Cockatrice is not quite as fun as watching it on paper, uh, but this was a blast, and uh, thanks everybody for coming to hang out. Uh, yeah, Reptar, thanks for thanks for tagging in here for this thrown together uh, stream that we did. 
Oh, no problem. This was a blast. Yeah, I really had a good time. Um, and uh, me too. Look, look forward to seeing you on March 26th for the next one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Any last words for sign off? Go follow your uh, Yeah. Uh, you can follow me at Halt I Am Reptar. Uh, you can see that on the stream. Otherwise, I am one half of at MDG Cabalcast. Uh, we run a podcast that uh, is uh, MTG Financial Podcast. We have episodes weekly. And the one thing we like to kind of lean on is the fact that we're not the same kind of speculators that everybody else is talking about trends in the format. We actually come at things from a vendor perspective, which makes it a little more unique. So you get a lot of behind the scenes information and some good stuff up front if you're you know, running your own shop. Like we did an entire episode about business taxes. Huh. Nobody else does that. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> And yeah, obviously so. St. Lotus stuff. Follow us along. Um, all the socials are linked from stlotus.org. Uh, Twitter is where we usually post actual things. And then the Discord is hopping as always, right? These kind of drafts happen probably about one every two weeks. So there's lots of options there. Uh, but the next live one of these we're going to be doing, hopefully in person, assuming that Omicron settles down, is going to be March 26th. So look forward to seeing you all then. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in.